Hey everyone. Hello. Daniel Ira. How are you, Kokiro? I'm Nicolero. doing Nicolero. I'm doing very good, thank you. Happy to know that. Oh, I was going to happy Wednesday. Happy, happy Wednesday too. Happy FedEx Day for us. Happy well, shipping day. We don't yeah, yeah. I, I wish mean, we, I wish we were. Sponsored. I wish we were. Oh yeah, that, sponsored by. That would be um, helpful. Yeah. Um, so yeah. very much. We uh, we sent uh, a few paintings today. Yes. Today, Wednesdays is usually our shipping day. Yeah. That's what we've established for years, I think. Yes. Um. So. Um. We did that. Mm -hmm. And uh, today. We're going to do uh, something a little specific, I think. I think we've talked about um, the different manners in which you can use contrast um, to aid you in the... Go ahead. Go. Oh, okay. To aid you in the, um, in the way your picture is read. And um, I think there's a few people that I can think of that do this uh, wonderfully. I think one of the people that does it just amazingly well and that I thoroughly enjoy um, looking at his paintings is uh, Jeremy Miranda. Mm -hmm. He's incredible. He is just so naturally attracted to um, contrast uh, by temperature. So cool against warm. That's mm -hmm. what we're going to do today. So I was saying the how, you know, we've talked about different ways in which you can use contrast and we have probably talked about um, contrast by value. So how mm -hmm. light something is against how dark something is. I think that one is the most, I was going to say basic, but it doesn't mean it's the most simple, but it's the most fundamental. Light mm -hmm. against dark is super powerful. I think it's probably the most powerful one of all. Um, but we also, when choosing to expand the um, available hues, uh, we start to gain uh, access to other forms of contrast. Mm -hmm. So we can use contrast by complementaries, for example. So the redness of something is going to be uh, displayed even more so when put against the greenness of something. I know that's a very weird way of expressing it, but pretty much means that, you know, uh, colors that are in opposite sides um, of the um, of your color circle are going to push the other color's nature. So that's why I say the greenness of something bring, brings out the redness of something. The mm -hmm. orangeness of something brings out the blueness of something. Mm -hmm. um, the purpleness, the violetness of something brings out the yellowness of something. Now, those things seem like unscientific in many ways, because why? I mean, the, the, the chromatic circle is something that we invented. That's not a thing that, you know, happens in nature. Um, but, and, and it's not like it has been like that, like, a, you know, the color wheel that we usually use, the color circle that we usually use. Um, I mean, it's changed over, over the centuries. So who knows if we know you know, something that is right that we can consider to be factual or right right now. Maybe a hundred years from now, we learn more stuff about the way we perceive color or about color and that changes also. But what we can, um, what we have established is that in painting particularly, you can use that knowledge to your advantage and it does help. You know, it does kind of work. It's one of those things that, I really don't know how, you know, physically it could be proven, but you can, you know, you can experience it, let's say, because it, again, it's something that I don't know how quantifiable it is, but it's something that you can experience when observing a work of art. Mm -hmm. So we have taken that knowledge to our advantage and used it so that, again, we can, um, we can exalt the potential of the things that we want to to say, of the variables that we use and how the way we organize them in our picture plane is actually helping us to say with even more power whatever it is that we want to say. 
Mm -hmm. So we can use uh, contrast by complementaries, which is very nice. That has to do absolutely with hue. We can use contrast by saturation. So imagine, you know, your picture plane super desaturated and suddenly you put like a high, you know, a, an area of very high chroma. You, obviously, you're going to get uh, a, a very high degree of contrast there. And one that is very, very particular would be because it's very, um, it's a very touchy subject, I feel, because it's not considered to be one of the properties of color, which is temperature. Uh, it, it's something, again, that we can perceive, and it's something that's very relative, highly relative, like many things in painting, but it's not something that we can just pinpoint. Like, we can, we can argue about hue, but there is something as the visible light spectrum. So we know the colors that are in the visible light spectrum, and we know the things, you know, the, the stimuli that human beings can interpret as color. We know it. That's a fact. But when we start to, you know, think about temperature, it's kind of weird. I've always, always had conversations with painters, like super, you know, pro painters that, um, you know, we're talking about whatever color I've, I've even had this conversation about, uh, ultramarine blue, which to me is like, and you know, it's almost like super easy to say it's a cool color. I've had people tell me, I actually think it's warm and that blows my mind because they are completely convinced that it's a warm color. And so I, I think that that's, those are some of the weirdest conversations that we can have when, you know, you start arguing about how we can measure the temperature of a single pigment. Uh, that takes us nowhere. But what we can do is, given the choices that we have in our palette, we can actually start to generate sort of like a scale. And, you know, given the the mixes that are possible within those you know colors that we have chosen we can say okay this would lean towards the you know cooler side of the spectrum this would lean towards the uh warmer side of the spectrum and i think that that is undebatable undebatable i'm sure there's going to be still a lot of people that feel that's not quite it but it only goes to show that color is experienced very differently. I don't think color is an objective truth. Um, I have no way of knowing because I don't. You know, the only basis for that is just how people express what they perceive about color. But I have no way of knowing if what I see, for example, is the same uh, stimuli that Danny processes. You know, I've always um, told you that I think yeah. that the only thing that unites the colors we see mm -hmm. is language. Because I do think that the yellow I see is not the yellow you see. Yeah, exactly. So my yellow can be your red. Yeah, or... for sure. Well, I don't know if that, but yellow can be orange or a yellow green. Some people can say green. No, it can be, or it can be a color that my brain doesn't understand. Right. I, I mean, there are people that are colorblind and mm -hmm. that's literally, maybe that's what you were describing is that taken to an extent where we have said, okay, that's actually a condition. Mm -hmm. But I think it it's not quite as these people are normal and then there's people that suffer from a condition of like different degrees of that mm -hmm. condition. And then it's either or. No, I think... I think there's a huge yeah. spectrum between, you know... What we understand, like you said, it, I think you said it perfectly. Like there's an idea that we've all agreed upon. Like not not all of us, but most of us in this world. But an idea as a grown up as a word. I mean, right, There's a, a word, a word too. Right. It, because the it color, is a but it's not like. Oh yeah, it's an absolute, you know, abstract concept. Mm -hmm. But we have sort of agreed that yellow is yellow, orange is orange, red is red. But again, I say sort of because there are there's communities, there's there's people in this world. Remember, the world is a very big place that because of their upbringing through centuries, you know, of keeping those traditions alive, 
they sometimes don't have a word for blue. Mm -hmm. All they see is greens or, you know, they have um, uh, like, you know, what they say about the Inuits that they refer to, you know, white in, in they have, you know, tons, dozens of words for white because there are different degrees of, of, white, yeah. of whiteness. And yeah, you know, you can understand that if you're surrounded by so much, you know, snow, so much whiteness, you start to become hypersensitive to small changes so mm -hmm. you are going to have language be your aid in trying to express those differences so yeah we we can't really i mean it's it's awfully presumptive to say oh we all think of yellow as yellow what are you talking mm -hmm. about that's a truth that's a universal truth not quite not quite there's tons of i have to look for it i had like a super cool um um article on on language and color it's just really, really interesting. I would be interested in reading it. Yeah, I have it, you on, find the, it. Uh, on our last uh, SSD drive that uh, fried. So I have to look for it again. Yeah, but if you find it, I will yeah, be I think up I like, to... Uh, I, I had to use... You know, I had to. I have to find another way because I, I think I was using... You, had, you still had your um, college uh, thing. I still have it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, I think maybe you still have it, but I think I tried it. One day and it didn't let me. But no, because the thing is, you as a teacher. Yeah, mine was mine is gone. Exactly, but mine as, as a former an, student. Exactly, I oh, still dang. have it. I don't have uh, brushes. brushes? Yeah. Okay. I'll or should I should I use nope. the new ones? Um, I mean, I have to use them. Yeah, so. but I'll yes, but I'll go for uh, the brushes you have there okay, you. if you need them. Because I ordered, like I told you guys, I ordered these. I these we always pay for our stuff. By the way, we never get stuff. Well. I'm not going to say never, but um, but w because we're not sponsored, like we um, we buy our own stuff. So I bought and to say, if, you know, and I have to g uh, give credit to where credit is due. Sí, gracias, Lindita. Mm -hmm. um, so I bought these. Uh, what are they? Number eight ivory filberts. They're not as expensive as I thought they were going to be, to be 100 percent honest. I uh, love seeing new brushes. Yeah, me too. Oh, they're different. Look at this. Mm. Look, they're not exactly the same. No. No, I think the handle is a little thicker. Not even the one. the length of the no, bristles. The, the length and the length of the handle is a little different. Uh, no, well, that's beat up. So, but that one has. No, this. but wait, that's the old one. This that's the your old, one. old. Oh, but it looks like it looks super good. good. Yeah, yeah, it looks yeah. Pretty good. yeah. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was the same, and I was like, "Yeah, they look like super different." No, What's no, no. Going on? These two are the new ones, so mm -hmm. you can see with the length of the bristles. But this is yeah. this one has hold its shape. Yeah. Let's see about the fullness. It's pretty. Uh, I think this no, one's it looks a little super bit good. fuller. I, I think mean, this one's a little bit. I'm gonna be kind of uh, um, picky about this, but it's a little fuller. Yeah, for sure. So they use more bristles. <laughs> So that happens in every single, you know, uh, company that uses, um, that does brushes. Sometimes they be, they get like a little stingy maybe, or because they do, they're done by hands. It's not, it's not by hand. It's not a, um, by hands. I mean, <laughs> but it's not like a super scientific method. Um, but this is fuller for sure. Yeah. I can feel it uh, anyways, but they're good brushes. So I bought these. So that would be the equivalent of that one. Same brush. Yes. And I bought also flats. Because those are the two that I use. Um, okay, let's open this. Uh, so I cut myself again. No. Yeah, I cut myself. Not bad, but I it's hurting. It was... Bad. No, it's not bad. But. Well, yes, it was. So this one has the biggest difference, I would say. So you're not supposed to do this, by the way. If there's like a little bit of gum or um, um, or some size keeping the uh, shape of the brush, don't do what I just did. <laughs> um, you're supposed to dip it, dip the brush on warm water, mm -hmm. and let the warm water dissolve uh, whatever little gum or size they put on the brushes. I use my saliva. Oh, okay, that's kind of gross, but I totally <laughs> get it. When uh, it's no. for watercolor, I do. I have been known to put 
um, to take the uh, little plastic thing, mm -hmm. plastic cover off of the brushes that, um, you know, if I went to whatever store, yeah, you know, Pearl Paint, um, whatever store, Utrecht, and I would try the brush because I always do this. Always, always do this, this. Because I, I already know if it's going to be too bouncy No, too and do soft. you ruin it when you put the plastic so, on again? So it loses a little bit of its shape when I do that. What do I do with a completely... It's not my brush. It's there for everyone. Oh. I put it in my mouth. They can't see I it. I lick but... it. Then it, you know, then it holds its shape again. And then I put the little plastic cover. Oh, so you're as gross as I am. It's not gross. Like... It's probably even grosser than what you do, but I think my um, my immune system, amazing. <laughs> you know, those are I the know, little because things. Because of that, I but... think that contributes. I think that contributes. No monkey pox for me. So this one is the one that I've beaten up quite a bit. So this one is this one. Yeah, I can tell that it's like fuller too. That I don't know if look like look. This is like ASMR. Wait, because I let don't have the. Tell me, let me know if you can see, you can spot the difference. Ready? Are you, are you ready? Yeah, but wait. What? Uh, what? The volume mm -hmm. of this one, is it the big dial? No, small dial. Okay. Turn it up a little bit. Can you hear me? Yeah, terribly. Terribly? Yeah. I mean, that's, a, that's normal for us. <laughs> So let me see if I, if you can sense. No, but you're like Bob Rossing it. Let me see if, oh, little rascal. <laughs> um, come here. You can, go. go ahead. Um, I don't know see, why I was yeah, whispering. I <laughs> let me see if you, yeah. Uh, let me see if you can sense which one is like bouncier. Like Okay, tighter, I'm going to close my eyes. Ready? Uh-huh. There's like a boonk, boonk. Wait, wait. One. No, but now you told me. So the first one, but you just told yeah, me. Yeah, but there's no bunk. Bunk, bunk. Yeah, but you were so like. This is, this is the new try one. Try to guess. Look, 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 look. Yeah, yeah. Let's not do the guessing game. But look, look. Kind of soft. Can you see that? It sounds like you're scratching. Now, now. Oh, Oosh. sorry. Oh, yeah, that killed it. Now, look. Can you feel? No, it's probably. Like, You're moving probably the me. table. Too much? No, no, no. The the. There's like a bunk, bunk. Yeah. Bunk. Yeah, it, it's because it's a little kind bit fuller. Of, so see. we have to tell very lovingly, Rosemary, um, use more bristles to your brush because you used to have you used to put more bristles. So yeah, you can tell this is like. Big difference. And these are about four years old, I think, I would say. Four years old. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Uh, go back to uh, putting a, a lot more bristles, please. Robin said, feeling a bit voyeuristic. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, uh, Robin. But you can do like a cool uh, voice Welcome. like that. Welcome. Robin. I can't. I think you can. You just have to commit. Mine is what you're terrible. Doing <laughs> So, another thing that I'm going to say... Oh, wait. And Van Sant was oh, saying, Maisha ooh. says hi. Hey, Maisha. Hey, Maisha. So, How another are you? thing, sadly, is that I got... Um, I got long filberts. I ordered regular filberts. And yesterday we were talking about filberts. that. Which yeah. is like... Which I can't use, and I'll show you why. Um... And I wrote to them. I'm not going to send them back because it's impossible for me to send them back. So, uh, because these brushes, if they mail them here, we have to pay so much in taxes. Like, it's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. So, um, these are actually pretty good. These are better. Well, they're smaller too. So, so these are regular filberts. You can see it's kind of like a nice filbert shape. And these are long filberts. Yes. So, you can actually see it's even higher than... Uh, this is a smaller brush, but it goes even longer, mm. and kind of higher. The thing is, because, you know, it's so long, um, it's very hard for that brush to hold its shape. Mm -hmm. So for me, that's way too soft. Mm. Way, way too soft. We were even, it was it yesterday? Yes. Yeah. We were talking about that, how you don't like the longer no. uh, brushes. 
So the bad thing about this for me, again, if you give these to Jeremy Lipkin, he's amazing. So yeah, that's not the point. The brush, the brush itself is not uh, the issue. That's why I ordered these. Like I wanted smaller ones because I of your handling, yeah, yeah. Because I put paint down. I'm like blah 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 blah. Yeah, blah. And the other one just like. And this one is like, hello. Yeah. And it just let me caress you. Let and me I caress you. Let me caress you. That's what they say. But I can't do that with this substrate and with the amount of paint that I use and with my you know butcher hands because I can't paint like that. So if I had. A gorgeous, you know, portrait grade Belgian linen, um, double primed, um, and I had my nice kind of flowy, oily medium. Then I just load all of that up with my color, and then I go, and it's beautiful. But I just don't paint like that. So, um, yeah. So these, I'm gonna try to find use for them. I mean, I guess. I could be I I it would be very dumb for me to use them initially cuz that's where I scrub the most that's where I have to put the most paint down. So I think these I have to use like by the end like really load them up. I have to put a ton of paint on them because I don't use medium. And then I barely I have to like uh just barely touch the surface. Mm -hmm. Um so I wrote to them. I was like, "Oh, come on, dudes." I mean, it's not. I, it's not bad. I'm sure these these were like these. No, but two it's were not like, what, what you ordered. Twenty five bucks, maybe. So it's not terrible. But again, yeah, it's it's what you said. It's not what I ordered. Yeah. And the thing is, just like with these, my hair, if they if they had messed up my order and they would have sent me long filberts for these, then I would have been like, oh, dude, I can't. Like, I I like using these the way I use them, but these are going to be useless for um for the way that I paint. Because I have a a longer flat that is really nice, but I, it's completely useless for the way I paint. Mm. So, um, please check your order. Sometimes you have like people in charge. I'm not gonna say the, uh, the company that I ordered from, because this is just a place in the US that sells uh, rosemary brushes, because Rose Rosemary is a British company, so. Um, so there, if if you want to buy them directly, you would have to buy them from the UK and having have them sent. Uh, but there are places in the US and websites that sell these that represent. You know, they have. Um, I guess they they represent rosemary in the US. Um, have somebody that knows their brushes when they're doing the orders, because maybe if you no, but hire I think people that they that even don't, have like super labeled. I know it actually says. Long filbert, yeah. ivory long, and look, these say ivory filbert. Yeah, yeah, but sometimes people just don't know, and and they just you know, and it's okay. It's like there's nothing wrong about that. But I would have been a little more frustrated if it was the brushes that I probably used the most. So I wrote to them. We don't have to. Um, we don't have to say the company. And I told them, look, I'm not going to return them. Just but just a heads up. Just be careful with. You know how you fill out the orders because it, this could have been like this was a uh, probably a hundred buck, uh, like a little over a hundred bucks in brushes. Um, but there's a lot of people that order, you know, three, four hundred, you know, bucks in brushes. Yes, a lot of people do that. So how much wh was uh? No, I think the those, long. Oh, I, I forget. I. You know, I think they're, the, the two of them are probably like 25 because they're, they're the smaller ones. So, so let's make a deal. What's that? I'll order no, you don't the ones no, and you'll no, no, give me that. No. So it's like I was buying buying those. Oh, no, no. no. We could do that. No, I mean, you know worry. I could no, use... No, you want to order brushes, go ahead. Order no, brushes. I don't. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 Just, Danny. We don't have to. I could give them a try. I mean... So I'm going to start with my older one. And this would be my suggestion with people that, that have older brushes. If you have like um, a surface that has a grit to it, which is most, most, um, most linens or canvases, they do have grit to it, to them. You would have to have like a very, very beautiful linen um, uh, with a super high thread count and very nicely primed for your brushes to not be you know, kind of like disturbed by the surface. 
or you would have to have like a heart surface, you know, masonite panel, um, whatever uh, you use, uh, aluminum panel, whatever you use to paint, to and and also be um, primed and um, and probably sanded so that it's uh, like a this pristine uh, enamel-like surface, like very very smooth. If not. If you have older brushes and if you have, if you buy newer brushes like use these are like as like your scrubbing brushes like when when you're going to lay stuff down don't just take the new brush and then do that these are still very good brushes so use the crap out of these and when you want to get a little bit finer then you know you you call upon the uh, newer ones so that's what we're going to do today um, I have a scribble here. So I have my mom. Mm -hmm. I, I've painted my mom in her room. This is my, my parents' room. It's to me, it's like that's my parents' room. I mean, it's how I've always how I'll always understand my parents' room. I've done like a small painting, I think, in our sketchbook. Um, there's a small painting of my mom that I really, really love. Um, Jody has that painting. I'm super happy that, you know, whenever I meet wonderful people. And whenever I, I am able to let go of paintings that I really, really like, but I don't, I don't usually express how much I like certain paintings, but sometimes it's inevitable. Um, like yesterday's painting, I really like it. I really, really yeah. like it. We um, even talked about yeah, it because I really, really Yeah, like and, and Fer's painting with uh, her with her uh, hands covering her face, I really like that painting. Um, and when Alan you know, expressed like his interest. And he was like, I'm going to get that painting. As soon as you post it, I'm going to get it. And he got the painting because we can't control who gets the painting. Really? Mm -hmm. um, I was very happy. I was very, very happy. That's the only thing that makes letting go of paintings a little bit easier when you know the person. So for example, our row rows, mm -hmm. that's like, oh my God, they like paintings can't be in better homes. Mm -hmm. Um, but yesterday's painting, oh, it's one of those things that I'm like, oh, I really like this. It's because I saw you, like I still see you when I see the painting, that the little head that I did of you. Mm -hmm. oh, I see you. It's yeah, like, thousand percent me. I, I know that that's like weird to say because I always make an effort. But sometimes, you know, as good as I can be, sometimes I fail at my drawing or my, my painting is a little heavy handed, whatever it is. But there are times when it's like, ugh, like a lot. I don't know if everything about the painting is just kind of falls into place. Mm -hmm. But but it's like a lot of it is just it just feels like. Ugh. And I was looking at it. I was actually looking at the video yesterday just to see. And I'm sorry, I'm gonna get to painting in a little bit. But I was looking at the video just to see how I painted it. And there's nothing weird. I don't see myself painting it differently or or bolder. I, I'm not doing anything weird. It's just that everything kind of worked. Hmm. Um, and that doesn't have to happen all the time. But when it does, it's like, it kind of feels not special, but let's no, say but that the painting is not special, special but the, the experience was, was special for yes. me. Yes. And today I woke up and I saw the painting. I was like, oh, I like this painting. Yeah, I like it. It's one it of those things that you go lot. like, oh, I like it. And the yes. thing is I say, ah, oh, because I'm always willing to let go of the paintings that I like. Um, but it's a, it's one of those things where I'm like, oh, I like that painting. So, um, but maybe we're going to be able to hold on to that painting for a little bit. So, I mean, it's still up for sale, but you know, something tells me that maybe that painting is, is going to remain with us, which is totally fine. Um, so, anyways, anyways, so I'm going to get started. So what I'm going to do in terms of temperature is I'm going this first kind of plane, this front plane, this, um, is going to be very warm. And then as it goes back, as it travels back, there's a room, there's like a little extra room that was built in my house. Like, you know, as as the family grew and as the house sort of expanded in, in a tet Tetris-like way, uh, this little part of my parents' room was built. And uh, it's just a way, it was just a way to put like a window there. And uh, just to give it a little more light, because my house must have been, if I could go back to my house when I was little, when I was like, I don't know, five, six, seven years old, it must have been dark. I'm 
sure it was like a cave. Yeah, I remember we even talked about it. I think in a video. Yeah. Because I was saying that it was it. I think it's still dark. It's dark. Yeah. It's yes. a Dark house. And I was talking about how the light is very warm. Yeah. Yeah. And I always remember like the warm yeah. light, but also because of uh the structure. Yeah. Of the like the construction of the house. Yeah. The windows are not like uh floor to ceiling. No, no, no. Smaller windows. So yeah, and I mean the thickness of the walls. Yeah. It's like crazy. I think that building at that moment had to be super expensive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The thick. walls are like crazy sturdy. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. These are thick walls. Like rock. Yeah. So Yeah, I have to. I'm so sorry. No, I have ahead. to um, put more paint. Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to use my whole palette just to take advantage of uh, like a wider range of temperature. Mm -hmm. And I don't have. I'm looking for my. Oh, and uh, by the way, because I was seeing in some comments that uh, people were saying that there's a change in format. So, yes, because uh, we're using the A A3 paper, but when we use it horizontally, we can't fit the palette. Yeah, yeah, it's a very Yeah, reason. so uh, that's why. That's why there's no palette today. Ah, lo acabo de ver, era amargo. Estaba diciendo cambio de formato. Yeah, sí. but it's not, it's not uh, quite, um, well, change in format. Maybe because video format. We just yeah, but, but it's because we're doing instead of horizontal, we're doing um, instead of vertical, we're doing horizontal. Forgive sí, me. Pero no, entonces le iba a responder a Margo en español que que sí el cambio de el formato del video es porque eh, estas son las hojas que son de 42 por 30 centímetros y cuando se hace horizontalmente, como son tan grandes las hojas. Eh, si ponemos la hoja y la pantalla eh, como que no primero la imagen se vería muy chiquita sí. segundo nos tocaría mover la cámara mucho más arriba entonces la manera más sencilla es que se vea más la pintura y por hoy pues no tener la paleta sí so is it okay if we say hi of course yeah please yeah I've been talking like so, uh, no not that much I no? mean it's just like traditional yeah I don't feel it's well I don't feel like you've been doing a monologue or something Always. like that. It's like you're just talking. Like a I villain, like it. Like monologuing. So Robin was saying hello. Mm. Hi, Robin. How are you? Half of our rows. Half of our rows. Yeah. I was going to say that maybe Robin would kind of recognize what the text in the paper is talking about. But then I thought it's in Spanish. No, but so, that, that's a good, uh, good, good call. Yeah, because it was. That was one of the exercises. Of, yeah, that we one did, of the exercises. Um, yeah, well, I was trying to uh, give clues to Robin. Oh, sorry. No, but so, I think she would have gotten it. It was Menorca related, so yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Robin knows what it is. Yeah, we had just to tell people. We had what was it, Robin? Ten minutes, maybe. Or was it? Yeah, I think it was in like no, or maybe fifteen. Yeah, it was more. fifteen minutes maybe. Yeah. So fifteen minutes to write. There was somebody posing, and we had fifteen minutes to write as much as we could about the pose. Only write. So only words. Only no drawings. No drawing, and then we had the rest of the morning se session. I think that was the morning session to do a painting based off of of a writing, and to see if if our, you know if our painting could echo the things that we were explaining so, ourselves. No. So Alan, Katia, and Robin oh my God. were saying 30 minutes. 30 so minutes? So it was 30 minutes, yeah. Or maybe 20. No, I think it was 20. <laughs> no, 30 minutes. I mean, all of them are saying uh, 30 minutes. Oh, and wow. And Katia was That's saying... a lot. Katia was saying so traumatized still. <laughs> so I... Think I'm because guessing of they the, remember the trauma. It. They know that. Yeah, they, they. I'm gonna trust the time. I'm gonna perfectly. trust the time that you yeah. guys are saying because apparently, yeah. if all of you came, 30 minutes. Yeah, 30. So yeah, it was uh, 30 minutes, 
and then uh the model was gone yeah so yeah, it was yeah. just painting from uh what people wrote yep. down so yes It's a very cool exercise uh robin said 30 went fast oh wow you, you know that i i thought it went absurdly fast so that's why i was trying to remember how much it was and i was like it wasn't it wasn't super long and apparently no it was that's pretty amazing alan was saying if we didn't become better at painting we got better at writing <laughs> i know i know a lot of people were like what do you do what are you doing to us like, <laughs> i write my checks to pay for my like electric bill and that's it mm, kevin ravana was saying that is a really cool idea it's very very cool i feel tough very tough. cool but very very tough yes But I think it's a very good idea to really pay attention to the post. Not just like seeing, like I look at the model, then I go down and I do a line, then I go back and down and back and forth and back and forth without thinking about right. it. But like really thinking about what you're seeing and how, I think you even uh, spoke about how that post makes you feel You're up, yeah. Which I think it's very important. Yeah. So it's not like this pose makes me sad. No, it's like you can feel, I don't know, the um, like weight. the weight exactly yeah. of the pose uh, because they're leaning to the side. So all those things. Yeah, you can speak about thickness or thinness or mm -hmm. softness, hardness. Yes. Um. So it's it's really interesting to see if, if we have the ability, we can express it in words for sure, but to see if we if we understand how we can translate whatever we're expressing in words, like whatever we're explaining to ourselves, to to see, to measure if we can translate that into paint. And what is almost always going to happen, and this has nothing to do with like ability or or how much um Uh, drawing, you know, experience you have. But what is for sure going to happen is that you're going to realize that there's like a, a, an unavoidable disconnect between the way we see and the things that we can execute. Mm -hmm. So it's a very tough part. Katia was saying, I, try, I tried to decipher it the other day, broke a sweat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kevin Ravana said, I suppose it would help you understand your thought process when you're assessing a model for a drawing or painting. Yeah, it makes you a little more conscious of the way you observe. I'll, I would say a lot the way more. you perceive, yes. Because you have like the urge to write everything because you know the model's not going to be there. So yeah. you can only rely on things you wrote. And it's so. very hard to, to try and establish the, the nature of the things that you're going to write. Like, what do I write? How things mm. feel or how things are, how things, you know, where things hit so that I could give myself like a, you know, like a, a little bit of a, a floor plan, if you will, of, of how to build this pose. Mm -hmm. um, it's very, very interesting yes. when you when you look back and you say, what were the things, what were the things that I wrote, like that I thought were going to make sense for me? And were they things that were useful or was i really kind of uh, exerting all this energy into trying to describe something that when i read it i was like i have no idea how to paint this i have no clue how to approach this as a painting so um yeah that what i was saying about that disconnect being obvious it is cool it's something that i think we all had to experience i feel um cody winnie key was saying Did you have to trade papers with someone and paint from what they wrote? Oh. Could see some people getting upset about it. Like, I wrote everything I needed. So that would be super complicated because I think yeah. that you can write in a very different way. Oh, express things. Yeah. To, exactly. So, Cody, it that wouldn't have worked for that one. But I can tell you that the first painting that we did... Had something with that. Was a painting that... Um, A co-painting. Yeah, it was a, a, a painting that was started in the uh, morning session. And uh, then it was, 
you know, then we exchanged paintings randomly. So the, uh, the, another person had to pick up from where the other person had left off. Yes. And, and that was the first exercise that we did. So <laughs> it was like really good to set the pace of what was going to be the week. Yes. But uh, in terms of the writing, we, we didn't repeat that sort of exercise of, of trying to let go of your painting. Because in this one, I was, I was actually telling people, nobody else has to read this. You know, this is only for you. Don't feel like, oh my God, my vocabulary isn't big enough. Yeah, it's to not explain. like an essay. Yeah, it's just not. for Nobody you. was gonna. I I wasn't gonna ask to read. I wasn't asked. I I was never gonna proofread like what they had wrote and to see if the um if if the image coincided with what they had described because I would think that the painting could serve as proof of those things. Mm -hmm. Because yes, you can work from memory. And I realized that I was working a lot initially from visual memory with my own painting. But then I would have to, you know, reread what I wrote and I would say, okay, this is important. I emphasized this when I was writing. So I need to pay a little more attention to this area of the painting. Um, initially, what's fresh est is your visual memory. Like you're gonna have to, you're, you try to hold on to those uh, imprints as much as you can. But after like an hour of working, it's super hard. Like a lot of it is just gone. And then you're just battling with your own drawing and your own, you know, mixing. So it's a very, very tough exercise. It, it really is. I don't think there's people probably, well, maybe people that are used to working from their imagination, they can just, you know, they, they their brain is already super trained to not feel insecure about having nothing to fall back on. But usually people like us that we are trained w with painting from life and then we paint from photographs, which is pretty much my own um, my own evolution, let's say. Um, not evolution is I I've evolved into something, but no, no, no. It's just that my paint, my practice has evolved in that way. I paint from life. I can paint from life for sure. I love painting from life. But um, but usually I paint from photographs, and that's totally fine for me. Um, but it does it does put a lot of things to test. So it was it was fun. It was very very fun. And uh, we've said this before, but none of those things would have worked if people weren't like okay, we're doing this. Like yeah. blindly, they wanted to do this. Or if people had idea of what was going to happen. Oh yeah, nobody knew. Nobody knew of yeah, these every day was prior like a, to the... Yeah, um, a virgin cookie. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it sucked, you know, it sucked. Yeah. The cookie that you got. But, yeah, Th but those kind of message messages that you just read and you're like, what What are they trying yeah, to, to he, tell me? Yeah, what is this dude talking about? I think about? that was the reaction of a lot of people when you... When you always describe the exercises, yeah, yeah, yeah. Last day we we softened a little bit because yeah, it was too much. It, it is a lot because yeah. the day before we had painted for a long time and super challenging paintings outdoors. Yes, so we needed like time to like settle down. But but all in all, people were people were amazing. I couldn't have asked for for a better just um, for better embracing of what we were trying to do. And like Danny said, like blind embracing. So, Katya was saying unfortune cookie. <laughs> unfortunate cookie. That's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Um, Alan was saying, and I remember you said you painted after without looking at those notes, at least in the first part of the painting. So, yes, it was because uh, Alan was saying this before you were describing that part of like the visual memory. Oh, yeah, yeah, that yeah. you yeah. retained. I think it's so hard not to... Mm, rely upon visual memory initially but i have to say i mean i think i don't have a good visual memory because mm -hmm. i would enter into like panic mode mm -hmm. and i would see that thing that i have to remember mm -hmm. in such a panic then that then i would close my eyes and i can't word out what i was seeing yeah because i think that that might happen to a lot of people because you're like, I need to remember. And you force yourself so much that you just blink and you forget everything. Yeah, you you start realizing how, you know, how exceptional people that do, for example, comic books or graphic novels, mm. or, you know, when we talk about uh, Kim Jong-gi, how exceptional those people are. Yeah, because well, 
and and that's working from imagination. Yes. Because I think it's kind of different to have like a visual vocabulary in your head. Yeah. And you can use that as a tool when you're working from imagination. But when you need to like really concentrate in what you're seeing to talk about that. Yeah. Not to talk about something you're creating in your head, but yeah. to talk about that thing that you were seeing. I think that's super hard. Yeah, that's not something that's... that's um, and it's not an exercise, let's say, that we usually do. No, and I think that we think that we pay attention, but we don't. Yeah, we realize we don't really pay very attention. little we probably mm, understand without like direct observation. Yes. And how very little we also... Mm, we can translate from you know, ways in which we explain things to ourselves, how very, you know, how very thin that ability is to say, this is what I, this is what I perceived put into words. Let me see if I can translate that into color mm -hmm. into painted decisions. Oof, mm. not easy at all. Yeah. Not at all easy. So. And I even think that, I mean, we as painters don't pay attention we as artists but we as human beings don't really pay mm. close attention when we think we're paying attention right right it's like even i remember that uh program i don't remember the name of the program but i remember i saw a program <laughs> okay that's a good start then yeah for your, uh, thesis <laughs> uh where there was someone in a counter yeah. Oh, like, right, right, right. Like, it was uh, one of those discovery or, yeah. or like... Uh, yes, but they were like talking to you with a red shirt. And then they would go down to grab a key or something that they would give you. And then they would appear with a green shirt. Or and, like a totally different person. Oh, yes. Uh, or a, a totally different person. Yeah, that's actually and what no they were one, like saying. Let's see if we can do this like no more. one would even notice yeah i mean no one would notice notice yeah it was like crazy I so felt yes even i bad. think i was like that's a human being how can we not notice a human being and they were not like oh they were similar no they were like no, super sometimes different they were people. very different people yes um so yes i just uh remember that uh robin said but the whole workshop you were asking us to ask what did we want our painting to be? So we had to step away from writing and make fresh decisions. Yeah, yeah, it's very, it's very tough. Cody Winicky was saying, ah, I'm so jealous. I know your workshops aren't always like this, but it does sound like a really fun one. It was fun. It was very tough. Challenging. Yeah, I think I haven't worked as hard, like painted as hard because I was always... Um, I was telling everyone there that I was also going to paint mm -hmm. um, because I hadn't done those exercises either. And I thought it was very cheap of me to say, hey, I'm going to ask this of you guys, but I'm just going to sit back and look and relax. Mm -hmm. um, no, no, no. I think for the whole experience to be true, I also had to go through that experience, you know, alongside everyone. And um, so we could all say, wow, that was tough. Mm -hmm. You know, it was super, super important to say, you know, oh, this was a tough day today. So I think it was it was a very draining, um, very, very particular uh, workshop, very particular. But I also think that um, it's an awesome opportunity to do something like that because you're in a place that it's very strange. It's a very, very beautiful, beautifully strange place. So it's almost begging of you to do something that you don't usually do. Um, so that that was the whole point. And and the guys at Menorca, uh, Carlos and Jorge, mm -hmm. they wanted me from the beginning to be like, hey, do something different. Do something that you've never done before. And uh, I was like, okay, th that's super fun for me to do these exercises for sure. Like I can totally embrace this. Um, and um and everyone again none of it would have worked if people would have complained initially or would have said hey this is ridiculous i'm paying like you know a bunch of money and i don't know what this is about like what are you going on like this is this is crazy 
Yeah, but uh, everyone had like the best attitude. Yeah, it only, you know, we said this at the beginning because I was like trying to be for a good attitude. <laughs> yeah, I was hoping that everyone could understand how how really important it was for us to be like 100% in. Mm -hmm. But I I eventually I noticed that yeah, we don't have to, you know, I I didn't have to really ask that of people because it, that that uh sentiment was already there that willingness to to work was already there so it was pretty awesome just made my job and the the um, purpose of the workshop just so much easier and so much cooler brady fellow said hello just joining you hey. this writing you're discussing are you talking about writing a description on the painting and then painting over those words well, not this particular painting, not not this one. Uh, that could have been interesting, actually, as an exercise. But um, no, no, no. These these I had. This was the pad that I took with me to um, the workshop, a, a recent workshop that we did in Menorca. So I, I'm just using that, and I'm just using the paper for that. So we're reminiscing about that exercise, but not not in this particular painting. I'm not sure how that would work in a live session. I'm trying to think if something like that could work in a live session. Um, I mean, I, I'm sure we could make it work, but it would be kind of pointless to, like I could show the, the uh, pose, like the pose that I was looking at. Um, maybe we could put it, we could put the reference and I could just, well, no, that would be half an hour of writing and nobody wants to see that. It could have been it could be prior to the to the um to the painting and maybe Danny puts the photo up so that you guys can see what I'm painting and then I could, you know, tell you what I I I like the things that oh, we could kind of do this, I guess. Mm -hmm. I like it. Yeah, I could show you guys what I wrote and how I describe the um how I I I would describe the image. And then I would do my best to see if I could uh, paint, you know, whatever it is that I was describing. And just for fun's sake, because it's not the purpose of this is not to say, oh, my God, you painted exactly the same thing from memory. That's amazing. No, 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 no. That's that's not what we're trying to get, you know, to here. We're trying to see if we can look at a stimulus like say, oh, my God, this is so cool and explain to ourselves why it is that we are moved by this you know thing that we're looking at this moment that we're looking at and then you know the, the the initial hurdle is to say what moves you show me what moves you tell me what moves you no first tell me what moves you or <laughs> tell yourself what moves you mm -hmm. see if you have the ability to explain to yourself what moves you which is a really big hurdle very big sometimes because you know that sounds easy but sometimes we're like i know i like it and if you dig in deeper and you go like, why do you like it? You go like, I, uh, I don't know, but I know I like it, but I don't know how to explain why I like it. So that's going to be the first part that you have to get through. And then, you know, you start to reread whatever it is that you wrote and you're going to use that as the plans to construct this painting. And hopefully the second hurdle is that your painting uh, demonstrates the things that, or echoes the things that you were trying to express or the reasons that you were trying to express of you know why this stimulus moves you. That one is very tough because that one means that you understand, you not only understand why you feel this, this sensible attraction to whatever you're looking at, but you can also translate that attraction into painted decisions. Um, and you have a way to measure how those painted decisions, um, kind of like how, how much of those, the degree in which those painted decisions can amplify what you're feeling. So if you're really feeling attracted to something, you know how to go to your palate and say, I like I am moved this much. You you start you, you you start to understand what it means to say this much, which is very tough. Again, very, very tough. We're we're sort of talking like th these are like very regular things to do. 
And oh, no, these are not simple things at all, at all. So, yeah, it's a, it's a tough exercise. The very nature of that exercise is, is very, very tough. Mm. Robin was saying, am I being too obvious when I say I keep seeing Freud's mother here? Oh, no. I mean, some of the uh, we could go. We could do a list of mothers in painting. And um, no, no, Freud, there's a special, I mean, we're talking about Freud here. So it's almost like a gargoyle painting. But um, there's a special kind of heart to the paintings he does of his mom. And you're totally right. I don't know if you feel the same thing that I'm saying. But there is a, a there's a separation, I feel like there's fascination with form and anatomy and just the humanity of of you know, whomever was sitting in front of him. But I always feel that there's, you know, the best of Freud paintings are, are there's a connection. And I think his the, the paintings of his mother are especially, again, there's, there's a, some sweetness to it. Mm -hmm. Mind you, it's almost like a heart of stone, but there is like sweetness. There is something that says, oh, this is you know, like, there's a little extra here that is not, quite present in the other portraits um again i don't know if you guys kind of feel that i certainly do i i totally i know exactly what i'm referring to when i when i express things the uh, the 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 little bit of um little bit of heart that i feel is in is in those paintings um but yeah but we could go through you know easy ones like the whistler whistler mom is is amazing um well it's not Soroya's mom but uh Clotilde with uh her daughter Oh yeah like oh yeah 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 that's like one. painting mother motherhood hood, let's yeah, say Yeah motherhood painting Which is a little bit different I would say Yes No that's different. why I said it's not the same Yeah But if I think about mother painting Oh yeah I just go that back has to, to be that. one of the most beautiful yeah. ones for sure Um yeah, there is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's, there's that that degree of sweetness that's in in Soroya's painting. Again, in a very weird, um, in different measure, but it, but there's closeness to that. I think is 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 in the um, in the Freud paintings of his mother. Mm -hmm. um, trying to think, the Helen Schierfbeck painting of her mother, which is very very Whistler, also. Uh, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing her name right, but she's she's a beast of an artist. Um, and that painting is just absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous. Um, there's a Rembrandt painting of her mother, just old when she was older, uh, reading like a, a Bible or like a Old Testament or something. Mm -hmm. um, but there's also like, is it a an, a drawing or an etching? No, oh yeah, he etched uh, a few. Um, he did a few yeah, etchings. Yeah, yeah. Of her, of, I don't know of why mother. I have the memory that's. Oh yeah, it's like a profile. It's it. Well, he did that too. There's one that has like a few faces of her, no, and there's I'm one that it has different stages. So maybe that's what you're. No, thinking. no, no. She has like the painting in is her a profile. Head. Yeah, yeah. She has like the, this. Um, no, this one. This one's the one I'm talking about. Oh, very nice. Yes, yes, very nice. Yeah, this one. Yeah. And then he has another one of like different stages where mm -hmm. I think she's looking the other way, like a three quarter looking the other way, which is very, very nice, too. Mm -hmm. uh, who else? Let's see. Mother paintings. Mm. Mm. I don't know which one is my best mom painting. Or what I would consider like a really good my. I always feel like I get a lot of my mom and different paintings but i don't know if i have like my quintessential mom painting you know it's not a painting but uh hogney's color pencil drawing of their mom i don't remember that one or maybe i do yeah 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 yeah, yeah. no 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 i'm sorry uh, yeah so let's see hogney mom drawing yeah this one this one's the one i'm thinking about yeah yeah very nice yeah very and he nice. has like uh um, yeah, yeah yeah very nice very soulful yeah. also very also nice. this one. Such a I mean, I think you've seen a lot of them. Yeah, such a genius. Yeah. Oof. Yes. Who else? Maybe we have uh, suggestions. 
from everyone from, from people. Oh, let's see. Let's see. I hope uh, there's a pose there. Can you guys see the pose? I already like it because the pose is there. And I, I, I always have like my my um Vuillard um uh, Alon. My Vuillard. Um <laughs> that side of me that says, Oh, with very little. If, if it works with very little, then we're doing a good job. Um Vladan Djordjevic, Djordjevic okay. was saying, Arshil Gorky, Mother Painting and Drawing. Oh, so good. Yeah, that's one of my favorite paintings, by the way. Yeah, he painted that from a photo. And yeah. he did like different versions of that. I love it. And I love the fact that it's like he gridded that drawing and, and uh, he gridded the photograph. But then, you know, the the... The drawing is kind of off, and then it's a painting, and then he did another painting. Oh, I actually really like that painting. I think it's a wonderful painting. Mm, That's a good one. See. That's a very good one. Thank you for that. Because um, I'm seeing in the Google Arts and Culture, yeah, it is a celebration of famous mothers in art. There we go. Uh, so. We have. I can't see. You can't see. Yeah. What What can't you see? The names. They're like tiny. So, uh, James Abbott. Oh, that's Whistler. Yeah, yeah Whistler. Yeah. Mom. But yeah, yeah, I can't see the title of. Oh yeah, that's ridiculous. But yeah, that's Which Whistler. Of the that... artist mother. Yeah. Yeah, that's gotta be that. That one is would be in my top three. I love that painting. I I think it's some people think it's a little um a little too easy to pick that painting. I think it's easy because it's an amazing painting. I think it's that with his nocturnes is like Whistler at his best, I feel. And Whistler at his best was like oof. Well, it there's uh, Louis Bourgeois, uh, the spider. Okay, okay. Title well, a Mammon. lot of a lot of her work is just yeah. her family, yeah. And I can see the rest. <laughs> it's like uh, I don't know why it has like a broken file. Maybe is yeah. it, what is that? What page is that? Google uh, Arts. Yeah. Google Arts and Culture. That's yeah. sad. But, um, well, maybe uh, people are suggesting others. Let's see. Um, Alan was saying Van Gogh. Right, right, right. Hmm. So I'm seeing uh, uh, Mary Cassatt, uh artist mother, portrait oh. of the artist mother. Yeah, that one's very beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With the, I'm going to, I mean, this is the way I remember it, but with the kind of nose that there's like something about the nose that's all that seems a little off. But I think I saw photos and I was like, oh, yeah, that's pretty much her. No, but this one, because I'm talking about this one. Yeah, but look for uh, there's there's others that are paintings. Let's see. Hmm. I don't know. No? No, because, I mean, there's a lot of paintings about, again, motherhood. Yeah. Uh, or, or was it her mother? In no. No, it was her mother. Let me see. Let me check. No, I trust you. It's just I didn't... No, no, no. It's just that I, I'm... Oh yeah, the thing is, you're 
you get if you write Mary Kassat mother, mother, yeah, you just like get Mary like Kassat motherhood. Yeah, it's like getting Mary Kassat's work. Right, like right, right. A ton of her work. Oof. Uh, Alan was saying, but I don't know how to uh, pronounce it. It's so, it's, uh, that's such a, that's such a, you know. Mira, espera. Me her mother at, at the uh, Fine Art Museum in San Francisco, the painting is called Mrs. Robert S. Cassatt, the <laughs> artist mother by Mary Cassatt. Oh, come on. <laughs> She has a name, please. Oh, or am I thinking? No, I'm not thinking Berth Morisot. Maybe I'm thinking of Berth Morisot's um, mother. Yeah, maybe. 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 Was it? I think I was. I was mistaken. Maybe? No? Maybe? I don't, again, motherhood. Jesus Christ. I don't know. I'll find it. Well, we if, if I can't find it, we'll reference it tomorrow. Can you read this for me? Yes, please. Here. Oh. Oh. Kailbot. Kailbot. Yeah, I never know how to. Yeah. Kailbot. So, uh, Kailbot. Alan was saying Kailbot? Yeah. He was... Uh, he was, he's a very particular artist. He's super, super talented. He's very rich. Very, very rich. So very different from from other um, impressionists of the time. So he was impressed. Yeah, I guess. Mm, Marcial, Marcial was saying Nicolas Uribe and David Kassen. Oh, David's uh, painting of his mother. I think yeah. it's, her, it's his best painting. That is... Easily his best painting. That's a tremendous painting of, of David's. Javier Ugarte Espinosa dice, eh, Lucian Freud pintó y dibujó a su madre hasta su fin. Claro, estábamos, toda esta conversación la teníamos. Empezó en, empezó en Freud. Exactamente por señor Luciano. Por Robin, que dijo uh -huh. de Freud. Sandy Under the Sea. Uy. Oh. Dice, hola, por fin puedo verlos en vivo de nuevo. Sandy sí. Papo. Sí, sí, sí. Sandy under the long time no see. Oof. I mean, that's terrible, but it works. <laughs> oh, so is it okay to go back to say hi? Because I said, like, yes. hi to Robin, and then, yeah, and then we, we were like, deviated forget to about everyone Menorca's else. talk. So, yeah. Belt uh, was saying, hola. Hi, Belt. How are mm -hmm. you? Margo decía, eh, buenas tardes. Hola, Margo. Luca Guadaño dice, hola, ¿cómo están? Hoy funcionó la campanita. Grande, qué bueno, Luca. Qué bueno, mm, qué milagro, ¿no? Hoy funcionó, es porque la... Porque la despichó ayer. La ayer, sí. sí. <risa> ¿Cómo son las cosas, no, Luca? Eh, eso fue, sí. Sofía Centurión dice, Olis, buenas tardes. Hola, Sofía, ¿cómo estás? Javi Hav. Uh, said hi there to all. Saludos a todos. Hi, have you have. Um, Carla Gomez was saying, sending an emoji. The one that I always think it's like someone with a towel around their hair. But it's like someone... I mean, I always see someone okay. with a towel wrapped around their head. Yeah. And, it, but and what is it? It's actually pump? someone trying to... No. Trying to hug, and it has a heart in the back, in the back part. Okay. And it has oh, like yeah. a oh. like a Wi-Fi signal. Yeah. In the Either head. That or it's like um. Wi-Fi. Kardashian, like a Kim Wi -Fi Kardashian. Wi-Fi bot. Yeah, Kim just uh, farting. <laughs> Sorry, that's the only way I could say it. No, now that you say this, I I see someone like it's a laying. Kim, it's a Kim. Kim, happy fart. Someone laying in their uh, belly button and farting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But it's a cute fart. Uh, Lola Onigiri dice, buenas. Hola, Lola. Hola, Lola. Catherine Kenny was saying hi, everyone. Hi, Catherine. How are you? 
Rohit Kim Harvey said, "Hey guys, just finished my exams. Glad to see you guys." Mm. Yeah. Rohit always with also, the uh, studying. Yeah, and also long time no see. I know. Rohit. I mean, how are the exams? I think school is probably done. You're probably done with that. So, but uh how were the exams like? How was your uh desempeño? Oh. Um uh um you can do it no performance performance review that's what they yeah. do at work at jobs how was your performance in the exams and i'm thinking they're very good i'm thinking they're super responsible ma was saying hi everyone hey eh, cosette paz dice uh estrenaremos pinceles mm. Mm, sí, aunque ya le estoy teniendo como susto a estrenarlos. No, dale, sí. Pues miedo, es que siempre sí, es algo no. nuevo. Uno siempre tiene susto a estrenar las cosas nuevas. Mm, eh, a ver. Javi have said, I like that you will be painting on your notes. Will all the text be covered? I think so. I'm not, I mean, we'll, we'll see if it could, it could, you know. They can show up in some ways, but um, I'm not planning on just it being like a kind of poetic text painting or, you know, the, the writing has some sort of, um, it's echoing something that's going to happen in the actual painting because it's uh, purely kind of accidental to be, to be super, super honest. So... I don't like to push things that may look nice, but they're not real, so. Marcelo Peralta said, hi, everyone. Hey, Marcelo. Hey, Marcelo. Julius was saying, hi, guys. Hey, Julius. Julius. I don't think we've ever had Julius. Yeah, we've had. I think we've had Julius before. <laughs> no, and it's easier for me because uh, when people have um, like a little image like an icon to their name yeah like an avatar or i have yes i have like a visual memory of that okay uh callum was saying hola nines so hola nines hello hi callum Calumcito. how are you uh cody winnicky was saying i'm pretty sure there's only a handful places that carry rosemary brushes in the u.s and they should have known better a little bit they could have done a better job i, I agree with that Gav Gav, so Katya, who's mm -hmm. saying hi, hi, so happy to be here. I'm happy to know that Katya is not missing any um, live stream. Uh, I mean, don't now. put that pressure. No, 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 because Katya told me. Because she was like, oh, uh, when are you guys going to go back to live streams? And I was like, we've been live, stream live streaming all these days. And I think that Katya realized that... Uh, Maybe she didn't have the bell or maybe she didn't realize we were doing the live streams. Maybe she pressed the same button as uh, Guadaño. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, the unsubscribe. Yeah, right. Uh, so I'm happy to know that Katia can be here with us too. Uh, Javier Ugarte Espinosa dice, estoy conectado con ustedes desde Chile. Qué bueno. Y eh, decía... chilenos. Decía Javier, sí. he avanzado mucho en mi pintura viendo sus programas, vivo en la montaña y para mí son dos personitas muy cálidas. Jeje. Ay, muchas gracias. Ay, Yo un muchas poco más gracias. Que Dani. Eh... Me gusta que dice dos persononitas. Persononita. Somos dos persononitas. Ese es chileno, obviamente. Sí. Eh, sí, no. Yo, yo soy un poquito más caliente que Dani. ¿Más caliente? ¿Eso suena raro? Sí. Te, te dejo ser más caliente mm, que yo, sí. ¿También suena raro? Sí, no, sí. pero... Sí, sí, sí. Eh, pero tenía que... No, iba a decir que era como por mi panza, pero ya, ya me desvié. ¿Qué? Nada, gracias. Sigamos. Eh... <risa> Además, soy más caliente por mi panza, Nicolás. Mm. Cada vez peor. Mm. Eh... Y eh, decía... Eh, Cosette Paz sí. decía Javier Ugarte también vivo en montaña pero sí no 
también vivo, no mm. en montaña, mm. pero sí en un pueblito muy pequeñito y silencioso, alrededor es caballos, vacas, ovejas, e igual me entretienen el señor Nicolás y la niña Daniela. Muchas gracias, pero lo de niñas se quedó atrás hace rato. <risa> Y muchas veces, sí. Es eso, que además del señor y la niña. Sí, no, ese, nosotros acá combatiendo eh, todo tipo de, de, de juicio que se nos puede hacer pues por nuestra diferencia de edad. Y el señor y la niña. El señor y la no, niña, sí. Si sí, vamos no. a una iglesia, Más nos amarran el, a un palo. Me gusta el niño y la señora. No, sí. El niño Nicolás y la señora. No, Daniela. no. Le pegué al, tri, al trípode. Niña, cuidado. <risa> me dio calor. Sí. <risa> Pero aquí yo soy el más caliente. Sí. Sí. Pues por señor. Por eh, eh, no, nos pueden decir el señor y la señora, todo sí. bien. O nos pueden decir Nicolás, Nicolás y, Daniela, y Daniela. O el con, niño y la niña. Con toda confianza. También recibido. Sí. Yo, te, Ay, yo debo mío, decirlo. No, le estoy pegando. A mí en muchas ocasiones me dicen joven. Sí. Y eso es. Eh, bien recibido importante. para sí, ti. Sí, yo toda. Toda limosna la recibo. Y yo tengo que decir que a mí muchas veces me han dicho mm. señora y no sé cómo recibirlo. Siempre siento que están hablándole a otra persona. No, pero pues tú eres... Una no, porque señora. normalmente dicen señorita, pero cuando es como señora, pues ya señora. Y yo nunca volteo, yo digo a esa señora sí. que llaman y llaman y no. Sí, dígame niña. No, niña no. Niña no. Eh... A ver, ¿en dónde estaba? Me desvió otra vez. No sé. Catherine was saying hello. Hi, Catherine. How are you? Eh... Marcelo Peralta said, When I like a painting I did, I tell myself that only if no one buys it, that means it's supposed to be mine. Otherwise, it was never meant to be. Mm, that's a good, good way of seeing it. Mm, let's see... Mm. Mm -hmm. kind of, oh. No, I was going to say that I'm kind of secretly there with yesterday's painting. I think they were saying that regarding yesterday's painting. Yeah. Because they I were saying that at the beginning. So I, I really like it and there's a part of me that wants to keep it. That's why it's priced like a little higher. Um, but... You know, I've had that experience with other works and I, I've, I've learned how to let go, but I'm secretly thinking, I really like this painting. So, yeah. Eh, Sofía Centurión dice, ja, 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 yo tengo 18. Y el otro día una mujer me dijo, señora, casi me mato. <laughs> Se cayó de la bicicleta. <laughs> sí. eh, eh, Cosette. Dice, ja, 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 para mí es una niña, una jovencita, el niñote y la niña. Eso pasa mm. cuando se es joven, eh, cuando se es joven, ya que te digan señora, punto, punto, punto. Sí, el, pero el niñote y la el niña. El niñote, <risa> me siento como que un día salí con pañal y me tomaron fotos. Sí, no, 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 no. sé. No. Cosette, vamos a hacer una cosa, eh... Vamos a decir, eh, o le propongo, más bien, porque yo no le puedo obligar a que nos diga nada. Si nos quiere decir el niñote y la niña, pues, pues bueno. Pero, Daniela y Nicolás. Eh, y suena fantástico. Lich dice, infanta Danielita. Ja, ja, ja. Sí. sí, es que eso suena como, además del señor y la niña. No, es que ¿saben qué pasa? O sea, Difícil. yo soy... O sea, hay una diferencia de edad entre Dan y yo. Sí. Y yo soy prematuramente calvo, porque yo... Y yo soy eternamente y Daniela joven. Y Daniela es como... Tiene a una mí no cara me pasan de feto. Los años. No, además sí. es que a mí, o sea, perdón, pero yo tengo la misma cara desde los... O la, sea, nunca he cambiado. Desde la ecografía. Sí. O sea, yo nunca... Yo, yo creo que solo los años me van a pasar, como, no sé, cuando me empiece a arrugar o algo así, porque mi cara es de joven Sí, no, no, no. Sí, entonces sí, tú prematuramente calvo y yo no, y, eternamente y tú la joven. fuente de la eterna sí. juventud, la niña. Bueno, lo bueno es que te ven conmigo y te dicen el niñote. Sí. Entonces... Cuando te mueras en el periódico es, la niña murió a los 86 años. <risa> Eh, 
Lola Onigiri dice, jajaja, ja, ja, el niño y la niña, apoyo a Cosette. Estas dos siempre. Sí, la guachafita. Y Cosette dice, ¿verdad, Lola? Eh, no. Y eh, Lola dice, qué rico tener esa genética. ¿La de la calvicie prematura? ¿Sí, la mía o...? Supongo que están hablando de esa. Ignacio Casas dice, jajaja, ja, ja, feto, peor aún. Sí, tú dices que yo tengo cara de feto, Nicolás. Oye, pi... no, pero pues no ofendas. No seas... <risa> ¿No ofendas qué? Es mi cara. No, cuidado. No, pues si yo tengo cara de feto, yo puedo hablar feto? así. Le diste a todos los fetos feos en este momento. O sea, me acabas de decir fea. Respeta. Nicolás. No, respeta. A ver. Ah, uh, Nicolás Mijarevich was saying, hey, hey, everyone. Hey. Hey, Nicola, how are you? Nicola. Mm. Estaba diciendo, Ignacio Casas, ¿la experiencia le ha ayudado a resolver con menos pinceladas? Eh, no estaba, ¿Al señor? No. Estaba diciendo eso mucho antes de lo del señor, pero es que sí. leí el peor comentario sí, para después. Pues, hazme, hazme... Hazme sentir señor sin decirme señor, por favor. Sí. La experiencia. Sí, usted cree que... Toda los... esa experiencia que ¿Usted carga. Usted cree que todas esas décadas eh, sí. que, que demuestran esas canas sí. le han colaborado. No. Y sí, la respuesta es creo que sí. Eh, Cosette dice que risa. Y Lola dice, jaja, por supuesto que es la calvicie prematura y no la de la eterna juventud. Gracias. Por supuesto. Um, let's see. Manu was saying, mm -hmm. uh, Bonjour, Danny et Nicolas. Oh, oulala, merci, merci. Merci, Manu. Salud. Manu. Salud, Manu. Así se dice, que <laughs> reírte. Sí. Eh, oye, yo creo que yo moví un poquito la... Bueno, no importa. No importa. Fue sin culpa. Sí. Pero entonces voy a... Déjate de niñadas, por favor. Ay, no. Igual tú con tus dos de señor no te darías cuenta. ¿Quién habla? No veo. No escucho. <risa> Más duro, por favor. A ver, espérate. Ya es que achiquité un poquito mi cámara porque ya estaba pisando la imagen. Listo. Eh... Oh, Nicolás Mijarevich yeah. uh, was saying, I found Paul Cezanne. Cezanne's mother? Uh, the artist mother, mm. 1867. Okay, I don't have, I think, is she the one that's like, I don't know, what is she doing? Peeling? Let's Google. Peeling oranges or something? I don't know. Peeling something or eating something? I, I forget what that mm, painting. No. No? She's just like. Staring. Which one is it? Is it this one? Okay. It, what? That's it. What year was it? 1867. 1867. Ugh. Let me see. No, this one. Oh, no. I I didn't have that one in, in my memory, to be honest. Um, And Catherine was saying de Chirico. De Chirico. De Chirico. De chirico. De chiripas. De chiripas, que no lo pronuncio. Um, let's see. <clears throat> yeah, that's like an earlier painting of his. Cody Winicky said, I really love some of, of the ones you did of your mom. In Thank you. Nicolás Uribe Painter, the book. Thank you. The black like and white too. one with hints of blue. And the one where oh, she's like standing behind all the stuff in the kitchen. So uh, good. That's probably my favorite. Yeah, that's very, very good. I, I like, like I like that one. I that's like very those. much my mom. I know I it sounds really, weird, but it makes sense. I really love the one that you did in the wood. Not oh, in the yeah. woods. No, you were not in the woods. My mom but in the woods. No. Yeah. She uh, the, runs out. She has like her hand in, yeah, in her like chest, yeah, if like I'm not mistaken. Too. Yeah. Um... Uh, Eh, Sofía Centurión decía, I'm quote-unquote working, but not working really, doing drawings while I, while I listen to you guys. Yesterday's painting was amazing. Thank you. I like it too. I really like it. Mm. Eh, a ver. I know it sounds cheap when I say I really like something, because I really like just about anything I do, 
But um, if I didn't like it means that I didn't do a good job or that I didn't kind of like reach what I wanted to reach or that I that something es escaped me. And I try to work really hard while I'm painting to minimize those things happening. So, and I always stop when I feel it's close to what I am capable of doing. So chances are when I do stuff, I like it. I, I actually like it. Um, but yeah, yesterday there's something about it. I just like the composition. I like, um, the shape of the hair. I think I, I was super lucky in painting it well, uh, because it's a very, very tricky thing to paint and, and it feels both very dry, but also super, super kind of silky, uh, like in terms of the, um, gesture and, um, I don't know. It's just a lot of things came together kind of nicely. Mm -hmm. So I, I like it. Cosette dice, oye, soy canosa desde los 28. Mm, hay Cosette tratando de o arreglar sea, las sí, cosas. Como a mi edad. Como sí, de como niña. Como la niña. <ríe> desde niñota. Mm -hmm. Ah, no, desde niña. Niña. No, niña. niñota. No. Eh, Manu said, we. Se, I don't know how to say that. Oh, go for sí, it, go. Sí, sí. ¿Cómo se lee la C del Barça? Como ese, ¿no? No, C, C. C, C. C, C, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, Javier Ugarte Espinosa dice, ¿y qué pasa con los, papa con los papas? ¿No merecemos un retrato? Pero... Supongo que con los papás. Sí, con las papas. O de pronto, sí. La criolla, eh... <risa> No, yo pinté mucho a mi papá. Sí. Yo pinté mucho, mucho a mi papá. Eh, mi papá murió hace ya unos años, eh, por si no sabían. Pero lo, lo pinté mucho y disfruté mucho, mucho pintando a mi papá. Incluso son dos pinturas muy grandes que hice de mi papá. Son seguramente de mis pinturas favoritas y van a ser de mis pinturas... Yo siento de mis mejores pinturas y favoritas en toda mi vida. Entonces, no, no, no. Espera, me voy a volver a poner el saco. Es que necesito como un punto medio. Uh -huh. ¿Camisa? No. O sea, es que con la camisa... ¿Qué? Y el agua fría me da un poquito de frío. ¿Qué? Tengo que confesar. Ah, el agua. Estoy tomando, sí. Pensé que es la ducha o algo así vas a decir. <ríe> sí. eh, y el saco es que tiene pelo por dentro. Uh -huh, qué asco. No, no, pelos míos que se me cayeron, pelos de la chaqueta, es así, como, pues pelos, obviamente no, no sé qué está de animal, pasando, lindita. sino como tela peluda. Tu eterna búsqueda de una temperatura adecuada. Sí. Que nunca, nunca llegamos a eso. No, pero estoy bien, estoy bien. Mm. Es que pensé que no quería tanto calorcito, pero estoy bien. Así. Perfecto. Por ahora. Por así, el por ahora. <ríe> tu vida es... Por ahora. No. Mi vida es de muchas cosas eh, que no son solo por ahora. Dani, si por no ejemplo, mucho. si salimos a caminar, entonces sale con un, um, una chaqueta. Uh -huh. Por, por ahí a cuadra y media. ¡Jue madre, qué calor! No, Uf, siempre. ¡Qué calor! Se quita la chaqueta justo cuando estamos cruzando un puente por sí. el puente peatonal. Entonces sí. se quita la chaqueta. También la incomoda si de pronto pasan tipos y la miran porque está mostrando los hombros o porque está mostrando los brazos, porque pues los manes somos un asco, pero eh, entonces también la incomoda eso y a mí eso pues también me da mucha rabia y la hace sentir como, o sea, yo sé que Dani es de esas mujeres que le encantaría vestirse con camisetas que a ella le gustan, es que como no. de tiritas. Es que chiquitas, lo que me parece o... charro es que mmm, en Colombia pasa mucho todavía y lo, lo digo en Colombia porque... O sea, digamos, ahorita que estábamos de viaje, ese, eso no lo sentía en España. Como sí, en que Europa yo sentí pasa que. Muy poco exacto, eso. que la gente se vestía como quisiera y ya. Pero es que acá es lo que tú dices, o sea, ni siquiera. Es que uno tiene una camisa de tiritas, mm. o sea, o una camisa donde se le ve a uno el hombro, y pasa a alguien y siempre como que o dice algo, mira. Pues no siempre, pero a, a veces pasa y es muy charro, porque es como. Ay, como que entonces uno no se puede poner lo que uno quiere. O es uno verdad. a veces como que se cohibe de ponerse lo que uno quiere. Lo que te gustaría Porque ponerte, se anticipa sí. exacto a lo que 
a lo que va a pasar como sí. en la calle o en... Pero, sí. pero yo siempre igual me quito la chaqueta. Sí, y... sí, sí. Ya. Pero o sea... entonces, o sea, aparte de eso, que pues bueno, o sea, es una realidad social de Colombia. Que a veces curiosamente pasa en el puente peatonal. Sí. ¿Que lo de la gente o el... Sí, que te lo pues quitas? siempre me quito, sí, es muy chistoso, yo ya tengo mi rutina y me quito el saco o chaqueta o lo que sea en el puente peatonal. Sí. Pero muchas veces pasa lo de la gente como que pasa mirando raro o algo en el puente o bajando el puente. Sí, 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 pasa, mm. sí. Bueno, ¿y después? Y después eh, caminamos por ahí tres cuadras más y dice, jue madre, este frío. No, el viento, nunca sí. digo. Uy, uy. Digo, uy, es que hace mucho es, viento. Uy. Es que Entonces se yo, hace un túnel de viento por la calle. Yo normalmente tengo un morral, una maleta. Entonces, yo le digo, ven, mete la, la chaqueta en mi maleta, yo la cargo. Yo a veces la llevo en la cartera. Y a las dos cuadras, uy, espérame y saco otra vez mi saco. Espera y saco no, mi pero chaqueta. normalmente lo que pasa es que yo llevo dos capas. Entonces, mm. puedo llevar un saco y una chaqueta. Entonces, te entrego las dos mm. y a las dos cuadras te pido solo el saco. Sí, es una no manera. Además, chaqueta. tenemos que parar como, como, no sé, 40 segundos ahí a que se cambie en la calle... Eh, que se cambie, ¿no? O sea, literal, es ponerme un saco. Pero hay veces como que tiras todo, es la cartera al suelo, te tienes que quitar uno que tenías puesto para meterte el otro. Es toda una producción. Y yo soy, ay, Dios mío. La verdad, me demoró... Póngase uno. Nada, o pero sea... Pero póngase uno, el tres que quiere, déjeselo. Tres segundos, pero... Por el amor de todo lo divino. Pero, don Nicolás... Don Nicolás, el señor Nicolás. El, ese señor sí jodea. Ay, ese señor ese no señor... tiene paciencia ya. No, es que ya cuando viejo se... Ya todo... no tiene paciencia. ¿Quién se los aguanta? Eh... Lola Onigiri dice, jaja, yo entiendo a Dani, yo soy así, con la diferencia de que no me quito el saco porque me estresa quitar y poner. No, aquí... no a mí, yo me quito el saco y el que se estresa por quitar y poner sí, es Nicolás. Aquí a la niña no le, no le importa la quitarse niña. y ponérselo 70 mil veces no. en, eh, en un mismo, no, en un pues trayecto. Yo le obedezco a lo que me pide mi cuerpo. ¿Tiene calor? Me quito el saco. Paro, pues me dile, quito el saco. Pero pues dile a tu cuerpo que te mandes en que el no cada 30 segundos. <ríe> eh, sí, pero es que Nicolás... Es muy curioso, si Nicolás salió sin chaqueta en mangas de camisa, puede estar haciendo un viento terrible, no piensa en el frío, no, no nada. nada. Si Nicolás salió con chaqueta impermeable, o sea, como de plumas, y está haciendo un sol terrible, nada. O sea, perfecto, está así, mm. perfecto hasta que se devuelve a la casa. Es que no me quejo. Sí te quejas mucho, no, no me solo quejo. no por el calor ah, de la... En este, en este caso no me quejo. En eso no, solo en eso no. Es que los viejos tuvimos que pasar por uno, otras cosas mm. y aprendimos a no quejarnos tanto. Pues tú te quejas bastante. De otras cosas. Por eso. Eh, Cosette dice, así somos las mujeres, no encontramos temperatura justa. Es, yo debo aceptar que eso es cliché, pero es un cliché que juepucha si no es cierto con No. Dani. Conmigo. Contigo, por eso. Es un cliché porque siempre es como, ay, bla, las mujeres. Sí, es que igual yo no creo en nada que sea como todas las mujeres bla. No, 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 no. No, no pero hay una razón bla. por la que clichés se vuelven clichés, o sea, por la que estereotipos se vuelven estereotipos. Pero yo tengo que dar fe, así como dicen, ay, hombre terco que nunca lee instrucciones. Pues yo. Ese 100%, soy yo. casi sí. me atoró. Ay, Estaba tomando hombre agua y que quería no, decir hombre sí. Hombre que le da mamera a pedir direcciones. No, Nicolás con las instrucciones, o sea, es como... Yo tengo un súper buen instinto para armar No, cosas. no lo tienes. Súper bueno. No, porque al final uno termina viendo y puso puntillas donde tenía que haber tuercas. No, el no, mueble no, tenía un cajón, no. pero no aparece el cajón en ningún lado en lo que él ensambla. No, 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 y sirve perfecto. Y no por eso a mí me encanta a mí armar las ah, cosas. Ah, pero también es porque te gusta, o sea, le, le tienes mucho le hago, gusto a Y le hago cosas. caso a las cosas. A mí me sorprendiste cuando yo no tuve espalda como por una semana. ¿Y eh, armé el mueble? Sí, armaste un closet re complejo. Pues es que además fue apenas, o sea, llevábamos viviendo juntos súper poquito. Mm. Y yo creo que tú pensaste que yo te necesitaba a ti para armar el mueble. No, ¿qué te pasa? Y, Lo que pasa o sea, es que quería... No, yo, pero o sea, es que hay gente que no es buena... Quería hacer mi parte. No, hay gente que no, no es buena al, no. armando los muebles. No pero, yo, no, pero no digas eso porque yo te he conocido siempre y sé que 
tú eres una persona que le gusta usar herramientas y le gusta usar, o sea, le gusta armar cosas. Yo, o sea, nunca ni te traté ni, ni te entendí. No, nunca, nunca. Lo digo como, es porque... Ay, la niña que se machucó porque cogió el martillo mal. No, es como, lo no, digo mira, es porque... El es a ver, para el otro lado, o sea, Dani. el closet que armé tenía dos metros de alto. No, es que era un burro. Y las enorme. cajas, o sea, las cajas pesaban tanto que Nicolás, por alzar una de esas cajas, cuando no tenía que alzarla, porque el señor que trajo el mueble venía con una faja Pensé que ibas de a decir, peso. Porque el señor le dio por alzarla solo. <ríe> no, no, no. Y Nicolás señor le dijo que ya es, que ya que ya es sabe señor. Que tiene su edad y que ya sabe que no debe sí, hacer que esa cosas. Esa espalda ya no le responde igual. No, él alzó. O sea, el señor le dijo: No, no las alce que son muy pesadas. Y Nicolás tranquilo y fue. Uh, Uy, buen se madre. fue el señor de los muebles y Nicolás. O sea, acostado. No, no, no. ¿Sabes no, que trabajaste estoy un poquito, mentiras. Sí. No, yo no estoy orgullosa porque te hiciste más daño. No, por... no me importa, pero el orgullo me tenía que llevar a algún lado. O sea, yo dije, yo dije, bueno, me rompí la espalda, lo sé, no puedo demostrarlo tan rápido. Sí, y, y yo entonces... era, ¿estás bien? Sí. Uy, no. Pero era como moviendo la mano para el destornillador y era, uh. No, no, no. No, si me, echaba, uh. si me echaba un pedo, tenías que llevarme urgencias. No podía. Sí. O sea, no podía. Pues te tuvieron que ir a poner inyección. Sí, sí, sí. En la casa. Que... No, 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 fue horrible. O sea, y Nicolás odia estar acostado, como hacer siesta, todo eso, Nicolás no puede. Estuvo acostado. Un viejo que trabaja. Y Nicolás además, <ríe> Nicolás además, eh, si pasa un día, o sea, yo no paso días sin bañarme porque no me gusta, pero lo he hecho. O sea, lo he hecho como que hice, no sé, trasnoché y entonces estuve todo el día haciendo pereza y no me bañé. Nicolás nunca en su vida hasta que le pasó lo de la espalda. Acuérdate que no te pudiste parar a bañarte el primer día. Un día, sí. Creo que es el Estuvo... único día en mi vida que no me Por bañaba. eso, por eso. Estuviste súper mal. Muy mal. Tengo y, que aceptarlo. Y me decía, no, 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 pero déjame, yo te ayudo. Y yo tranquilo y yo alzando los tablot, o sea, las tablas así de dos metros... Y yo, como pude, porque sí, yo lo, lo acosté en la sala. ¿A mí? No, <risa> también lo acosté en el sofá. ¿Lo acosté a ese viejo? Ac no, acosté el mueble. Que se durmiera? <risa> Fue madre viejo. Acosté el mueble. Que para allá viejo no estorbe. Porque parada no alcanzaba. Acosté el mueble y lo armé y luego lo terminé de armar en el cuarto. O sea, lo moví ya armado hacia el cuarto. Uh -huh. La verdad. Estuve muy bien ahí. Una dura, eh. una dura. Es que no es una dura como, uy, armó el mueble. No, es que era un mueble jodido de armar. La de dos metros. Sí, era un mueble. No, y era, de, o sea, no solo Pesadísimo. lo alto, era un burro. Era era súper sí. difícil de mover, súper, sí. súper complejo. O sea, no era tampoco, yo que he armado mil muebles en la vida. Este no, era, era para hacer con, al, o sea, era una alguien. tarea de sí, más de una persona. Sí, no sé. era, sí. era un trabajo de, de dos personas. Sí. Eh... Bueno, ya, voy a... ya. ¿Qué? ¿Qué? O sea, no, es que no, no, es que ah, me estoy no. hablando a mí mismo, a como diciéndome, ya bueno, como ya, ya porque de... tengo que usar el pincel nuevo. Entonces, Dale, ya, sí, ya. Sí, ya. no sé, no sé, es como ese culillo que uno siente a con comprar algo nuevo. Eh... Yo lo siento siempre, es como estrenar. Cosette dice, jajaja, ja, ja, qué risa, Superwoman y el señor jodido. No, fue pucha. <risa> Ay, sí. Eh, hablando de la temperatura, Ignacio Casas dice, sí. es su estómago, lo regula. ¿Qué? <risa> no entendí. Voy a decir que sí. Sí. Eh... JL... No, creo que lo entiendo, como no sé, yo no sé. ¿Que no te sé, regula no... la temperatura el estómago? Pues yo también entendí, pero... Pero sí pero puede no ser. Sé. Sí puede ser porque hay veces cuando uno tiene problemas haciéndole como digestión a algo súper pesado, uno se, uno suda, suda, o sea, el cuerpo, el cuerpo sube la temperatura a una barbaridad para tratar de, de digerir eh, las cosas que se comió, entonces sí, sí. Eh, JLFC Fire MC. Ok, that's a lot. Was saying, no hablo español, LOL. And oh, it's okay, that, we speak saying... both. So we have uh, moments where we're going to break into our Spanish. And we have moments where we're going to do English for everyone. But that's just how we vibe. That's that's yeah. just our channel. Um, that's 
the yeah. world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so um, I know I know that it's a big ask for people, especially new people. Uh, I'm not saying that you're new, but maybe. Um, no, they've been here. I remember they've been here. Yeah, but that's we like doing this. Like we like sometimes speaking Spanish, other times we speak a lot of English. Sometimes we do streams where it's like almost all English. And sometimes we do streams that it's like a lot of Spanish. Yeah. And, um, you yeah, know, I don't know. It is what it yeah. is. So. Mm, Julia Tovar. I don't know who that dice, is. Dice, hola. Hola, Julia. Julia fue que se fue ayer y la bloqueamos. O sí, fue... antier, creo. Quiero saber si se dio cuenta. Porque Julia se despidió. Y la bloqueamos. <laughs> Entonces quiero saber si supo o si se está enterando. Voy a probar. I'm going to try one of these uh, small ones. The long uh, filbert. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe I'm being a little... I was being a little too um, premature with my judgment. Maybe it was like... Yeah, maybe it destiny. does work. Yeah. Maybe. Now you're going to put it in... No, it does work. I have to do very light painting. By light, I mean l very light pressure. But it kind of works. Hmm. Yeah. No, I'm, I think I'm good. No, and you can yeah, see. Maybe, maybe you'll start liking them. Yeah. You know, out of necessity. It's you like always... a forced way of giving them a try. So. Uh, Lapis Exilis. So mm. Shade was saying, mm. hello. Hi, everyone. Sorry, I'm late. I'm a little late today. Oh, Had friends okay. visiting. Oh, it's okay. No, it's fine. Were you like, hey, friends, you have to go. Yeah. I have a live stream to attend. Yeah. Hurry it's up, time. please. time, yeah. Hurry you up. said you were going to be here until two. Yeah, my uh, mother is sick. <laughs> um, Cosette Paz dice, a mí me pasa igual cuando tengo pinceles nuevos. Cuesta agarrarlos, se ven tan lindos nuevos. Jaja. <laughs> sí. Um, Sofía Centurión dice una pregunta para Nico. Sí, señora. ¿Cómo manejas el óleo sin ningún tipo de solvente desde un principio? Yo uso un montón de aguarrás sí. en las primeras capas. Sí. Me encantaría quitarme ese hábito y no usar tanta. Sí, entonces yo, yo he comentado, Sofía, eh, señora Sofía, la señora de 18. Uh -huh. eh, Sofía, yo he comentado que lo hago, o sea, yo, yo empecé a disminuir el uso de aguarrás o trementina o cualquier otro tipo de solvente porque es que los solventes no son buenos, o sea, para la salud no son buenos, inhalarlos tanto tiempo no, son, no es bueno, son súper, súper irritantes, por más de que uno pueda ser joven, eso, y, y la verdad no tiene nada que ver con ser joven, nada que ver, o sea, uno puede generar un, alguna resistencia, uno puede ser un poquito más sensible, uno puede ser alérgico, yo creo que yo siempre fui una persona mmm, nunca hipersensible a eso. Yo me daba cuenta que olía muchísimo en los salones, en los estudios, pero yo me lo aguantaba siempre. Y yo, a mí no me salían, digamos, hay mucha gente que mmm, por tener un trapo con trementina eh, le sale un salpullido eh, en las manos. Entonces se da cuenta que tiene como una reacción alérgica eh, como cutánea al, a los solventes. Eh, yo nunca fui de eso hasta que empecé una época en que empecé a trabajar mucho en un espacio no pequeño pero con no muy buena ventilación y se me irritaron todas las vías respiratorias horrible o sea eh, la nariz yo no es en chiste yo hay resto de cosas que ya no vuelo mm. ya no o sea yo no sé qué le pasó a mi nariz no, y es cierto, desde hace 100%. muchísimos años no es como covid no es nada no esto es desde hace ya muchísimos años yo hay solventes Así como hay solventes que sí huelo, por ejemplo, lo que es, eh, como lo, no es acetona propiamente, pero como quita esmalte y cosas así. ¿Pero son, derivados de acetona? Pues sí, no, tú... no es un derivado, es parecido, pero acuérdate que ya no puede ser acetona, eh, eh, al menos aquí en Colombia, pues. Eh, okay. ¿La acetona? Que, no, no, porque la usan para la producción de droga, entonces ah, por eso es okay. que la limitan tanto. Pero el quita esmalte igual sí tiene acetona. No, creo que ya hay cosas que son como libres de acetona. Pues yo tengo uno, pero porque es fuerte con las uñas. Pero bueno, no, ¿qué estabas diciendo? Entonces, eh, por ejemplo, ese solvente a mí me... Uf, terrible, me da un dolor de cabeza, pero inmediato. O sea, no me lo aguanto. Mi cuerpo no se aguanta el quita esmalte. Es una cosa... 
yo me he tenido que bajar de buses, eh, Sofía, por ejemplo, cogía el bus cuando salía de la universidad o estaba enseñando y me tenía que bajar del bus porque la señora de atrás estaba limpiando las uñas eh, y me tenía que sentar ahí como en, eh, en la calle como media hora y después coger otro bus porque si no me vomitaba, o sea, me, me daba sí, durísimo, da. durísimo. Pero, y es súper curioso, o sea, yo podía pintarme las uñas mientras Nicolás no estaba o no, me pasó, fue una vez, me quité el esmalte en la casa de mis papás, estuve todo el, todo el día allá, y cuando volví, tú me dijiste, uy, huele, quita esmalte. Y yo decía, ¿qué? Me he lavado las manos como 30 veces, y sí, o sea, Nicolás eh, detecta esos olores, impresionante, pero hay otros que no, o sea, hay Exacto. cosas con las que tú me dices... Oye, ¿huele a algo? ¿Puedes venir y decirme si huele a algo? ¿Por qué no? Sí, exacto. Entonces, curiosamente con el quita esmalte, mi, o sea, todavía tengo como la, la, esa sensibilidad para, lo, para olerlo, que es lo que le recuerda a uno, que es que un, un solvente es una cosa fuertísima. Pero si ustedes me ponen un salón lleno de trementina, no me pasa nada. Lleno de barniz, damar, nada. O sea, ni me da dolor de cabeza, ni me... Lo, nada. Seguramente se me irrita... Eh, la garganta o la nariz como, como al final, pero que no me lo aguante, no, para nada. Entonces, yo lo que empecé a hacer, eh, Sofía, fue minimizar el, el uso del solvente. Y lo fui haciendo con los años, poco a poco, hasta que un punto dije, pues, pues yo ya no quiero usar solvente. O sea, yo, o sea, y yo entiendo muchísimo eh, que haya otras personas que sí lo quieren usar y que es indispensable para la manera como trabajan y... Todo eso, perfecto, pero yo no puedo, yo ya no lo quiero, no puedo, no quiero convivir con solvente, no, no quiero. Y, y siento que la vida me mejoró resto por quitármelo de encima, porque es que ahorita para mí sería otra vida, nosotros pintamos en el sitio donde vivimos, entonces para mí esa vida de, de, de un apartamento que, que huela fuertísimo a solvente, no, yo... yo o sea, yo entendí vivir así mucho tiempo y ya, ya no quiero esa manera. Sí. O sea, ya no quiero tener que creer que me toca porque es que mi trabajo, para mi trabajo es indispensable que yo use solvente. No, no, no. No es indispensable. Entonces, eh, sí. la manera técnica para, para ahora sí res, pues, responderle la pregunta a Sofía, pero también darle las razones por las que decidí no, eh, no usar más solvente, la manera técnica es súper simple y es usar mucha pintura. O sea, no parece, Sofía, pero sí toca usar mucha, mucha pintura. Por eso es que se me va pintura y hay veces yo he hecho un jurgo de blanco eh, y después me toca echar más blanco o, o se me van los colores como muy rápido. Eh, Sofía dice, la señora Sofía dice, no, porfa, <risa> no me maten con la edad. Jaja. Se quedó la señora Sofía. Doña Sofía. Doña Sofía. Doña Sofi. Eh, Kakeiro. No. Dice hello, hello. Perdón, lo tarde, jaja, pero acá voy. Oh, acá siempre. voy. Hola, Kakeiro. Sí, Uy, me pensamos. Sonó la panza? Sí. Yo no sé si el micrófono o yo me hizo nada de panza. Pues ojalá no. Impresionante. Impresionante. Eh, uy, fatal. Qué bueno tenerte acá, Cacaito. Yo sí dije, no, ya, se aburrió, se aburrió en nuestras conversaciones. Eh, Tammy Bradley was saying Yo what? quiero que Kakeiro nos diga algo y ahorita eh, le respondemos a Tammy. Kakeiro, díganme la verdad. Yo sé que salieron a cuidar a, a las perras. No, 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 pero no digas eso porque hay a veces más gente de mi familia que escucha. <risa> bueno. Si sí, es que yo te conozco. No, pero no era nada malo tampoco, pero bueno, bueno. No, dale, dale. Es que yo sé que vas a preguntar. Kakeiro, ustedes salieron huyendo por apenas vieron los mariachis, ¿no es cierto? Sí, yo sabía que iba a preguntar eso. Y yo sé que ahí se está riendo Kakeiro. Sí, Kakaito está diciendo, ¡dilo! <ríe> sí, yo ahí, no digas nada. No, no. No, pues igual no es nada malo. O sea, no, no es malo. Hay gente que le gustan los mariachis, hay gente que no. Santiago y ser fue pucha, nos van a poner a cantar y a bailar, vámonos. No, pero yo vi a Santiago, estaba, era durmiéndose. 
Yo lo pillé, me lo pillé. Cacaito no responde. No. Se Sería está chévere ahí que todavía. saliera Cacaito y Styping. Para saber Se está qué riendo responder. todavía. Ella sabe. Entonces, mientras tanto, respondamos. Por uh, favor. Tammy Bradley was saying what? What Spanish? Yes. Yes, we do speak Spanish and English. That's our native tongue. So Spanish, yeah. Yes, yes. So yeah. So maybe if you didn't know it, that's why we sometimes fumble with our English. So Uh Kakeiro dice Ja, 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 no, no salimos corriendo por los mariachis, solo que mi mamá ya me había hecho ojos, entonces tocaba, tocaba, ja, 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 pero lo hicimos corriendo para verlos y no alcanzamos. ¿Para vernos, para decirnos chao o para ver a los mariachis? Porque se perdió de una bailada que me eché con su abuela. No, porque ahí debió ver en el grupo de la familia. Que subieron el video. Ay, Dios santo. Sí, te No, no me muestres. Sí, se lo reenviaron a mi hermana, mi Ay, hermana reaccionó. Madre. Ah, yo no, mejor yo no saber de eso. No, pero... A mí me gusta, a mí me gusta hacer las cosas en su momento y después no volver a verlas. <risa> yo ahí tengo el video. No, gracias. No, eh, no, no. Pero no, yo tengo que decir que Nicolás fue la sensación del cumpleaños porque mi mamá me dice que después mi abuelita estaba muy contenta con Nicolás. Yo muy contento con tu abuela. Eh, Cacaito dice... Está muy cercana a mi edad, entonces... Eh... Ay, tan bobo. Cacaito dice, para verlos a ustedes, si te vimos bailando, Coco, jajaja, ja, ja, nos fuimos después de eso. Ay, te alcanzaron a ver en vivo ah, y en directo. Ah, lo que no hicieron fue despedirse ah, no, muy mal, sí, groseros. Sí, para no despedirse. Um, so, um, Julia Tovar. Oh, who is that? Dice, sí, volví para hablar y no pude. ¿Mentiras? <risa> Te dice, mentiras. Y dice, volví más tardecito a ver lo que faltaba y me enteré ahí, jajaja. Ja, ja. Y también vi otro en el que respondieron mi would you rather sin mi presencia, jajaja. Ja, ja. Sí, muy bien. Muy Pero bien. Julia, si, si pregunta y se va. A ver, okay. hagamos las cosas bien con Julia. ¿Qué? Okay. Julia, eh, que Julia proponga otro would you rather. Uh -huh. A ver, y lo respondemos acá Mucha con presión, Julia. presión, ¿no? Pero bueno. ¿Listo? Tienes 30 segundos, Julia. No, pero... Estoy molesta. O time Dije, out. Tienes 30 segundos, Julia, sí. Eh... Cacaito dice, yo me despedí de Dani luego porque no alcanzamos. Sí, sí, Nicolás está molestando. Yo les dije que yo Cacaito no. y Santi decían yo que... Yo no estoy molestando. Ay, tan bobo. Sí te dije que teníamos que cuadrar para que vengan. Um, so, Sau... Alan was saying, sorry, I missed the start of the video. What's the issue with the brushes? No, they're just new. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. It's just, um, oh, well, n there was an issue because I, I didn't uh, oh, order. Oh, maybe that one, yeah. Yeah, I didn't, I hadn't ordered uh, long flat, long filberts because I really feel that um, the way I paint, it's just not, it's not meant to be. Um, it's not conducive to using them properly. That's what I'm trying to say. And so uh, they just incorrectly sent me a couple of uh, long filberts. Um, but I, you know, honestly, I, I, it, it would have been a lot weirder if it was, um, if it was, if the long filberts were the uh, bigger brushes that I use. But uh, they did it with like smaller brushes. So I'm noticing that it, they're actually not bad at all. They're pretty good. So. But have you used them after you do did that uh, little stroke? Yeah. No, not um, <laughs> not not currently. <laughs> no, 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 because they're uh, too small. Okay, okay. That's the only reason. Okay, okay. That's the real reason, but not because I'm like, okay, I'm done. Yeah. No, I thought you were like, no, yeah, they're nice, and you just put them aside. No, no, no. They're just a little too small for these areas. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, So if I if I start using those, I, I think I'll start to paint just very, very small areas. God, this is way more complex than I had anticipated. But uh we'll keep painting though. Because I wanna I wanna have this painting, but I could have, you know, and I and I don't mind if it's like a big if it speaks about like big changes in temperature, which is, you know, what we're trying to do to go from this very warm kind of first plane and transition to this 
background that's lit by this open, very cool window, this open window that's letting cool light in. Um, I'm, I'm gladly fight through through this painting, but it's a lot. So I have to be very, very careful about the things that I do decide to paint or where I decide to put, you know, the effort into painting because it's uh, it's tough. It's going to be tough. Mm, Catherine Kenny was saying, I love that you guys switch back and forth between languages. I wish I spoke Spanish and I admire your bilingualism. Bilingualism. <laughs> nice one, Danny. <laughs> yeah. Just when they're like... Giving yeah. us props on our bilingual. I was going to say throwing flowers, yeah. but that's just in Spanish. But yeah. Um, and Catherine was also saying, I took 11 years of French here in Canada, but can't speak it. Oh, Catherine, 11 years? That's a... Uh, that's quite a lot. That's a yeah. lot. What were you doing in those 11 but years? Was it in school? Because if it was in school, it makes sense. I mean, you had 11 years of English here when you were learning at school. Yeah. And I had 11 years here. Yeah. So maybe that's why it's 11 years. 12, actually. 12? Yeah. You have 12? Yeah. Why? Because I... I oh, went, I had 13. You, yeah. Yeah, I don't know why you 13. thought it was 11. Because well, 11? Yeah. Yeah, no, no, no. But it's actually no in more, my more, case, more. My yeah. school only s starts in transition. Yeah, mine is, is pre K, pre kinder, kinder, transition. But I did kinder and transition, transition. Okay. <laughs> yeah, not for us. No, no, no. We started with that, so it's six years primary school, and then six years what would be high school. Let's say we don't have exactly high school like in the U.S., but let's say you know broad strokes. It's kind of like that. Javier Ugarte Espinosa dice, me tocó en vivo por casualidad. ¿Cómo hago para verlos en vivo nuevamente? Javier, eh, la manera más fácil es mm. en la parte de abajo, como acá, si sigue la pantalla abajo, abajo, abajo. Bueno, no, no tan abajo. No, que se sabe. O sea, si no, sigue no, la no. pantalla abajo del video, en, la en esta dirección, eh, aparece un botón de Es que creo que toca primero espichar suscribirse y si espicha una campanita, la imagen de una campanita que aparece ahí. ¿Sabes qué puedes hacer? Es súper chévere porque pronto, le va a llegar una imagen. Es útil, lindita, para, para la gente. Puedes tomarle una fotico como a esa parte de que dice suscribir o algo así y les y como mostrarle a la gente como dónde queda ese... Que hay mucha gente que de pronto no sabe o no sabe para qué es esa campanita. Entonces, vamos a hacer toda la vuelta. No sabe qué significa suscribirse. Entonces, eh, miremos acá. Miremos acá. Eh, Listo. No puedo verlo desde acá. Eh, porque estoy en la cuenta propia. Uh -huh. Sí, no, no sé eh, qué está pasando ahí. Wait. Wait. Voy a hacerlo súper eh, vieja escuela. No sé qué quiere decir eso. Necesitas un, un, eh, un, un pizarrón. Vieja escuela. Dibujarlo. Acuérdate que vieja escuela para mí es un pedazo de piedra y un cincel. Entonces. <risa> Dios. Espérate, es que se me moví el brazo del. Ya no importa. <risa> ¿Le has pegado al tripo de.? No, ahorita no. No, no, no. Moví Toda el brazo. Toda la del... tarde. Sí. No, pues dice el que siempre se estrella la cabeza ¿Hoy? contra... Hoy como Hoy un cañón estado. estado. Sí, sí, sí. Como un Lulane. <risa> Entonces, eh... Saluda, porque va a tomar una foto. Espérate, porque tiene delay. No sé cuánto tiempo voy a durar así. ¿Ya está saludando? No se ve nada. Un beso. Mi amor, ¿y un beso a qué? Ah, la mano. Ay, yo como en la cara de saludo, qué idiota. ¿Listo? Espérate. Un momento. A ver. Uno. No, ahí la tienes. Ya. Listo, ahí dice pantallazo. Uh -huh. Qué Nicolás. pena. Ay, un idiota, como siempre, yo un idiota. Además, mandándole un beso a qué. ¿Qué no pensaste sé, yo decía, que ibas? ¿qué estás haciendo? No, no entiendo, mi amor, ya. Ya a mi edad no, está no, tecnofobia, no. miña. No, 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 no. 
Ay, Nicolás. <risa> y yo sí te veía con la cara volteada y yo decía, ¿qué estás haciendo? Yo estaba haciendo un puchero como un pico. No. Eh, a ver. Entonces. Voy a hacer todo, toda la vuelta. No, pero hágala en vez de decir... <risa> Bueno, bueno, voy a sí. hacer clic aquí. Bueno, madre, deje narrar. Entonces, guardar. No, este. Y. Mmm... Ese viernes la estábamos rompiendo y mira. No, pues por ya. Por cosas con así razón. es que todo el mundo se fue. Eh. Oye, no, todo el mundo se fue. Bueno, al, muchos. <ríe> eh, suscribirse. Y ahora voy a... No, mi amor, ¿qué es esto? <ríe> ya, ya... No, hiciste sí, una sí, presentación. Sí. No, yo sé. Y el pobre Javier eh, se debió ir. Javier... Preguntó, ¿cómo hago para volver mañana? Y ya se fue. Pues sí. Ay, Dios santo, espera. <risa> Acá, no. Este, pongámoslo en amarillo. Entonces voy a hacer no un sea. círculo amarillo. No, mi amor. Alrededor de suscribirse, pero es que no veo la campana. <risa> la única cosa que era importante. <risa> no, no me la aparece. La campana, la única cosa. No me aparece porque no estoy desde, desde mi ¿Y por qué no abriste una ventana en cualquier otro canal y mostrabas la campanita y ya? Porque la gracia era mostrarlo en nuestro canal para que la gente de pronto que está viendo aprovechara y ve mi esfuerzo de hacer todo esto. No, mi amor. No. Espérate, entonces. Yo aquí estoy. Yo aquí espero porque me toca, pero la gente ya se fue, linda. A ver, pauso. No, no. dice que join, subscribed. No, mi amor. Tú estás subscribed a todo. O sea, tú sabes que lo que estamos tratando de mostrar a la gente es como lo sencillo que es. Sí. Lo sencillo. Y aquí es, el computador está echando humo. No puedo. Yo sé que no puedes. <ríe> bueno, voy a poner cómo lo hice. No, Entonces, no molesten. Está. Ahí está suscribirse y después buscan una campana. Um... <ríe> No, mi amor. Ya, no me apareció, no me apareció. Me toca desde el celular, lo hago para después. No, pero no, ahora. Ah, no, no he guardado la imagen. Me toca ir a un café internet, ya vengo. <risa> eh, a ver. Aquí. Acá. Aquí. Eh. No. Y ahí voy, ahí voy. Mi amor, pero ahí sí. Sí, fatal, fatal. Nada me salió. ¿Cómo es Karen, necesitamos esto de afán. Ah, ya voy, clic uh -huh. aquí, zoom. Puedes picharle a este clip para que me dé sugerencias <risa> para este documento de Word. Word. Listo. Listo. Entonces voy a cubrir un momentico un poco de la imagen. Mm. Y aquí. Es todo aquí. Ay, go... Perdón. Iba a decir algo. No. Eh, este. ¿Este qué? Es que no me sale. Espérate, no, porque no, no sé por qué no me está saliendo eso. Ya me estoy des desesperando. No me está saliendo la, la edición que hice. Esta. ¿La edición? Sí, solo el circulito alrededor. Eso, entonces, ahí. Ahí. Es fichan... Subscribe. Oye, 40 ¿Qué? minutos para, para un pantallazo. No, es que había hecho... 40 minutos no, para un pantallazo. Es que hice bastantes cosas. Te voy a explicar todo lo que hice y después dije, no, no tengo que hacer tanto. 40. No, lo que hice fue bajar la imagen de la campanita, tratar de poner la campanita, pero no me la bajo en PNG, sino en JPG. Entonces no la podía poner porque el blanco era distinto. Entonces lo traté de recortar y después dije, no, que voy a recortar el blanco, me voy a demorar recortar. años. Entonces volví. No. El caso es que... Mm, eh, Dios nos ayude. Si, si quieren y pueden, sería muy chévere que se suscriban y espichen la campanita. 
les prometo que es cien mil no... veces más sencillo que todo lo que hizo Dani ahorita. <risa> es solo darle clic. O sea, literal es encontrar eh... la campanita que está, o sea, donde ah, le no, dan mira. like al video, al lado hay un botón de suscribirse si no están suscritos al canal y al lado, después de que se suscriben, hay una campanita para notificaciones. Javier Ugarte Espinosa, uh -huh. que era quien estaba preguntando, antes de que yo hiciera todas las ediciones, dijo, Dani, apriete la campanita y ahora tiene unas líneas a los lados. Je, je ui. como uh, supongo. Muy bien. Y dice, gracias, Dani, con todo gusto. Eh, Cosette dice, fácil, jajaja. Ja, ja. No, de verdad, sí es muy fácil. Eh, sí. Uh -huh. No es como lo que mostré. Como es ese dicho, pero en español, como... Eh, do as I say, no. not as I do. No, no. El o padre sea, era replica, más pero no aplica. Era más pero, fácil. Sí, no sé Créanos. dónde voy. Eh, Paulo Vázquez was saying, your way of cleaning brushes have been helping me a lot. Thank you for sharing that. Oh, no, that's totally fine. Um, I'm glad. Callum was saying, Nicolas, when yes, you're Callum. at this point of the painting, yes. how do you lay down paint once the previous layers have, quote unquote, caked up from yeah. the raw paper? Yeah, super soft touch. Like the, the, the simple answer is just a lot of paint, but you don't press on your brush too hard. You just kind of like drag it across. That is like the only way to try to layer paint. If <clears throat> not, if you don't do that, you're going to disturb the paint that you have underneath. Uh, Catherine Kenny was saying, haha, I know. Yes, it's mandatory as a class in school. I loved it, but they didn't give us many opportunities to talk. I would love to try to learn now as an adult. Maybe it would all come back. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Camilo Monroy dice, Yo estoy en el canal hace rato. Recuerdo que fui el número 37. Ja, ja, ja. ¿Verdad? Uy. Wow. Pero Camilo está entonces desde que Our Painted Lives era... Claro, desde Días de Blanc. Sí, sí, sí. Grande Camilo. Se apoyo um, eterno. Se le quiere mucho. Kevin Ravana said, must need a lot of paint on the brush to do that. Yes, yes. So I was telling, that's what I was telling. Uh, <laughs> all of that long. That's what I was telling. <laughs> that's what I was telling Sofia that um, you, you need to, if you have to, if you're forgoing medium to... Um, to be to feel comfortable with the expressive quality of paint and you are exaggerating that even more by using a raw substrate yeah you have to make up for that somehow and the way that you're going to just eventually realize that you have to make it up is it's just with paint with a lot of paint mm, Callum was saying Nicolas ah oh, no 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 Callum Ciro eh, no 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 it's the same question Camilo Monroy dice, y el 20 en TikTok, jajaja. Ja, ja. Sí, pero eso sí fue como que se suscribió ayer. No, sí, sí, porque tenemos 21, 21, Camilo. sí. Ay, no puede estar tan orgulloso, discúlpeme. <risa> sí. Eh, a ver, Julia Tovar dice, jajaja, ja, ja, uf. Y ahora, eh, de pronto uno de comida. Would you rather have food that is always cold, but you can eat at any moment? Or eat hot meals, but only twice a day. What? Twice a day. I don't think that's a hard one, Julia. I don't care much for hot meals, to be honest. No, me neither. But I think that I'm okay with uh, twice a day because I never have breakfast. Okay, but I would do cold. Yeah. No, I would be good with both of them. If they tell me you can only have two meals a day, but they're hot, I would be fine. So maybe just one meal, just to make it a little bit diff uh, like harder. <laughs> Julia said once a day. Ha ha ha. Um, I'm not. I mean, I'm okay also with cold uh, mm, meals. So, because I was, I'm sorry, I was like thinking while I was uh, talking. Yeah. I'm thinking about. 
things that maybe I can't stand if they're cold? I don't think I'm I'm bad with with that. I could have like cold meats, you know, to do a sandwich, and I'm totally cool with that. Uh, pizza, I actually love Delicious. my pizza. You know, like other day, like the day after yeah, you yeah, buy yeah. the pizza, straight out of the fridge. Yes. I can so have pizza straight so out good. of the fridge. It's yes. super good. Um, mm. I don't know. Say goodbye to eggs. Unfortunately, that one that one would be a little painful. Um. But no, I could do it. Yeah, that's for me. It it would be a non. -issue. No, but eggs. I mean, I don't like uh hard boiled eggs. Yeah, you could do a salad but with like a like a hard boiled eat egg. Eat hard boiled eggs. Yeah, you're cold, right. I've, so I've had those in salads. I don't and like I've had hard boiled eggs. Yeah, you're right. No, actually, I could so do cold. Mm. I would miss my tea, my hot tea for sure. No, but I think they're talking about meals. Yeah, I don't know if they're talking about the. Let's put drinks in there also. Oh, just to make it a little Oh, because I would say that I'd ra rather have the possibility of having cold drinks than hot drinks. Yeah, I'm more I would, of miss, a cold I would miss my cold drinks for sure. I think that that's... So yeah. I would go for a cold, everything cold. But I, I can do everything cold too. Yeah. Mm. Julia dice, pongámosle once para que sea más difícil. Okay. Ah, once, pongámosle once. <laughs> <laughs> Pero es que no me lo ponen comillas ni nada. Sí, si empezó Desde en español. Desde a once comillas. Julia, si empezó, si empezó en español, tiene que terminar en español. Pongámosle once para que sea más difícil. Desde a once comidas, once, ya está difícil. Sí, comer a las once. Once grados de, de la temperatura de la comida. Almorzar a las once, que eso es muy factible aquí en esta casa. Pues eso era lo de tu colegio. Sí. Eh... Sí, pero ahí Julia me Como hizo siempre. un zigzag. Pongámosle 11. Como siempre, Julia, cagándola. No. A ver, hagamos... Eh, porque tengo que decir que ese Would You Rather estuvo más o menos. No, pésimo. Sí, o sea, Julia, tranquila. sí, estoy tratando de Queremos ser muy mucho amable. a Julia, pero estuvo Julia pésimo. dice, entonces la cambio un poquito. No, pues cambio la Comida toda. solo fría y bebidas calientes o comida caliente y bebidas frías. Pues comida caliente y bebidas frías. <risa> Para mí está muy fácil. Y dice, no, creo que también está muy fácil. Ja, 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 voy a pensar uno mejor. Sí. ¿Será que Julia puede pensar mejor si la metemos en el timeout? No, ya me da pesar. <risa> es que además me da miedo que en algún momento diga como que el usuario ha sido bloqueado de tanto Pues si, el, si, si YouTube reconoce... <risa> Si sí, YouTube reconoce que es que solo tiene ideas malas. Pues... Aunque los 300 segundos del timeout la podrían ayudar a pensar bien en la... Dan claridad. <laughs> Dan claridad. Cody Winnie Q saying, what about eating the same thing every day versus eating whatever you want every other day? Oh, whatever you want every other day. So you have to do a, a whole day a of fasting. Uh, fasting. Mm. Uh, I would eat the same thing every day. Can you choose? Like well, that what do you mean? thing. Can you choose what the thing that you're going to yeah, eat every exactly. single day is? Exactly. Um, and what would you choose if it's like, this is it. This is going to be it for you. Like, this is it. I think I would go with a very, um, Can like, it be a like a standard lunch. Like, could it be like a nine course meal? <laughs> it's like every single food. Like, Maybe chicken, uh, rice, and uh, puree. I don't know how to yeah, say Yeah, but it. put some vegetables in there. Like, it's oh, going to yeah. be your whole meal, your only and meal forever. No, and you know what would be super uh, complicated? What? If that's the only thing you can eat, like, at every time. I mean... That would That's have to be your breakfast, your lunch, your snack, your yeah. dinner. That's hard. That's tough. Because I think maybe a burger. But then I think no. Because if I get hungry more than once in a day and I have to have two burgers or Oh, three, yeah, no way. It's like... Um, Can't you go with like a burger for the only thing that you eat? Because when, we, when yes. we had burger, when we have burgers, which is not quite a lot, to be honest... I'm like done. 
No, the thing like, is that's that I my really, food for the day. I really love burgers. Yeah. Like I could do burgers. And the thing is that I've said this before, but it's hard to have a terribly horrible burger. Yeah. Well, example, let's imagine these are great. Like the food, no, 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 whatever no, food no, no, you're no, going to no. get is great. No, no, no. What I was saying is that uh, I can eat burger and I love burgers and I could eat it everywhere and they're good in every place I have them. Yeah. But for example, that's not the case with other of my favorite meals. Like, yeah. you know, I have one specific restaurant with one specific dish of sushi yeah. that I love. But it's not like I love every single sushi, regardless of the place I buy it. Yeah. So I don't know why I went there. Like I adore pizza, but it, if it was the only thing I could eat for the rest of my life, like that's not a no, good choice. That's hard. Yeah. That's a good one, Julia. Well, you not Julia. It? No, that was Cody. Yeah, but Julia can take note because Julia. Oh, Julia can learn saying, from Cody. Ese Nicolás, ha, 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 tan malo, ya, ya me pongo a pensar, no me saquen. <laughs> Julia, ¿cuál preferirías del que dice Cody? Um, I Cody don't know what said, I would eat. Cody said, yes, anything you can imagine eating, but only every other day. Although that's pretty good. No, I think I would go with that one. Actually, if you eat like a lot for one day. No, I think that, I mean, you were talking about fasting and I think there's people that do like super long fastings i don't know if 24 hour fastings but um but i i would rather eat everything i want, want? Yeah. every other day because yeah, it would be good. very hard to choose only one meal and be okay with it being the only thing i can eat but you know me i like i have the personality to do that I just don't know if the nutritional value of that would be great. Hmm. Well, not no. that I don't know. I, I mean, I, I could know say, that it's not. I could say burger. No. And I would be, well, that's me. Yeah, I, know. I could say burger. Yeah, but you would die in like six And you months. would die with pizza too. Yeah, yeah but I haven't picked, uh, I haven't picked uh, pizza. No, that's why I said every other day. Because I would be afraid uh, for my health. Yeah. If I choose a uh, hamburger. But you don't have to choose a hamburger. Well, I could say a salad. Yeah, but that's like, who who wants to live like that? It's not life. Mm, or, no, because the one I was saying, it's not as bad. I mean, if I had to choose only one meal, I would try to make it super balanced. Like right. a salad, a protein, protein. I don't know how to say it. Uh, carb and something to drink. Okay. And that's it. I mean, I wouldn't find like pleasure in eating in the way I do right now, but I would know that it's just helping me by keeping me alive. So. Okay. Hmm. So Julia said, maybe something with a lot of ingredients. So you can choose which depending on the moment, like arroz atollado. Yeah, but that's, I'm feeling like if that's the option, then it's almost like you have three wishes and it's like, I'm going to wish for a thousand wishes. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a little bit, that's like cheating. And arroz atollado, I think would not be very healthy. That's not good. Yeah, that's as bad as pizza, <laughs> I feel. Uh, Sandy under the sea said a burger with tomato and lettuce counts as salad. <laughs> but if, for example, you could have variations of burgers or variations of pizza, for example, yeah. I think you could do it because you can have a healthy pizza. Well, I you mean... can. I mean, I tried once a pizza. Uh, and the base of the pizza was made of, um, I forgot the name in champignon. Mushrooms? Mushrooms. Yeah, yeah, which I don't like. but No, but it was really good. I mean, it didn't taste like mushrooms. It just wasn't the regular uh, concoction they do for 
uh, pizza. So. Yeah. And I could do that with burgers. I mean, there's burgers that are like not bread, but a lettuce wrap that has like chicken or the burger inside, like the burger yeah, meat yeah, yeah. inside. Yeah. So I could do that easily, but. Yeah, no. Yeah, no. No. Mm, Julia said, no, I think I choose to eat anything I want any other day and just eat a lot of delicious things on those days. Yeah, me too. I think I would go for that. I think that's probably even healthier. Uh, Cody Winicky. No, Winicki actually, probably not. Cody Winicky said, I think I would for sure close to eat every bother day. Wait, what, Cody? Cody? I think you're drunk. <laughs> You're drunk or you have and to change just, your batteries. And just watch cooking shows to give myself ideas on what to eat every other day. Haha. <laughs> so, they're saying they would choose to eat every other day, but watch cooking cho shows? I think I couldn't uh, watch like food content. No, when that I'm would be starving. terrible. Yeah. That, that gets your stomach going. You're yeah, because I'm you're thinking... Suffer. We did like a juice detox with Nicolas and you would have like super good portioned uh, juices. Uh, so six juices a day, but you can't eat solids. And something happened, like I opened my Instagram and there were like burgers, pizza, uh, candy, ice cream, everything. And I was like... They know. No, it was, yes, I mean, and it was terrible. Like, I was getting super anxious, so. They know. Eh, Payer Gineros mm. dice, Hola, Ninico y Chat, estoy súper tarde, pero llegué. Ya estoy aquí haciendo maletas para volar a Colombia. Qué bueno, buen Uy, viaje, buen pa viaje para ir. Buen viaje para ir de vuelta al país. Su país lo espera. Uh -huh, está mejor. Um, eh, Doña Sofía dice, mm. yo comería cazuela de lentejas todos los días. Uy, qué bueno. Con lentejas. papas boñato y verduritas. No, esa no sé qué son. ¿Qué es papas boñato? ¿Será puré de papa? Ver, no, no boñato. creo. Suena como Jorge Oñato. Oñate, Oñato. Sofía nunca, no nos ha dicho A dónde sweet es. potato. Ah, batata entonces. Uh -huh. ¿Dónde se le dice boñato? Sí, quiero saber ¿De dónde es Sofía? Es como no, no, nadie, así le digo yo mm. Sí, yo le digo así lo, Pues lo metí en, en... No, ya iba a decir no, va, sí, pero no me... no, no. Eh, Lápiz X list mm. so. so Shade said LOL I already eat exactly the same thing every day Jaja, <laughs> meat and coffee LOL. That's how I grew up. So no sides? Ever? Because sometimes you eat something else. I'm not saying you as shade. But sometimes you have like a, the base of your diet. It's always the same. But you add like a something something. For us, it would be like four more carbohydrates. <laughs> yeah. Here in Colombia, yes. Oh, yeah. Callum said, I can eat tuna pasta bake every day for the rest of my life, but I'm still a student. Yeah, but I, I, I could have, I'm thinking of what eggs I could have. Because if I'm thinking of like one meal, and I don't want to make it like super complicated, like a meal that has everything. Yeah, because you were like nine curses, which... Right, right, right. But if it's just one, what I love the most is eggs i think that and i don't know how bad probably if you have like eggs every day you're gonna die no but you could do what uh leech was telling us about oh no you couldn't no it's a dish yeah it's not just a like, so rise and eggs rise and oh rise and eggs but um, and the vegetables super, yeah that's not super healthy rise and eggs and a salad I mean, that doesn't 
sound good though. Lapis exilis, so shade. Was saying no sides, nothing, just beef and coffee, a little cream in coffee. That's it. And I lost some fat and gained muscle sitting there painting. It's been absolutely great so far. Oh, look at that. Mm. The power of meat, I yeah. guess. Yeah. Uh, the cob, cob beef. Cob beef uh, regime. Or Is that coffee and beef? Beefy. That's what you were going the for? The beefy. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Beefy. Um, something's happening with the arm. My mic. Maybe it faints every time you're doing one of those uh, jokes. And it's yeah. like, please stop. Well, maybe it faints because I'm so hilarious. Hilarious. Mm -hmm. Uh. Lapis Exilis, so yeah. Shade. Oh. Was saying, love it, Danny. Yeah, the beefy. Oh, Shade, yeah. Are you in the beefy? Oh, yeah, Jesus. I love it too. Oh, God. You're, you're gone, Danny. Um, eh, Gyu. Mm. Oh, it says message retracted. Okay. Eh, a ver. Entonces, um, so let's see what people were saying about that too. Um, Cody said, no, uh, no, I already read that. Julia said, thank you, Cody, for improving my would you rather. <laughs> I, Julia is so nice. Yeah, but that was an easy task though. Uh, Julia, she's pick so it up. cute. Pick it up, Julia. No, she's so nice. No, 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 pick it up. Cody said the cooking shows would help expand the imagination, uh, though, so I would get an even greater variety. Also, not drunk, haha, <laughs> just trying to unload groceries and type at the same time. Oh, dude, multitasking. Mm. Eh, Cosette Paz dice, ¿Dónde viven ustedes? Digo, ¿en Colombia? En Bogotá. En Bogotá, Cosette. Bogotá Coset. Mm. Dani está rompiendo la hoy, Dani está. <risa> eh, Mi mamá diría está chistina, Dani. Sí. Eh, María. Uh -huh. Oh, so María is asking this. Uh, but maybe you could do a little uh, summary because I think we've answered some days ago, but maybe they weren't here when we answered to their question. Oh, please. Let's see. They were saying, is Chinese vermilion worth getting for master's studies? I'm going to refill my water. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, we answered that the other day, which is very curious. Short answer, I would say no. I would say you can feel totally comfortable with the possibilities that are available to you with uh, something like um, Cat Red, which is pretty much the uh, contemporary replacement. I mean, it has been for centuries, but the replacement for vermilion. So you don't have to worry about that. There's not much that you can do with um, with a real vermilion that you can't really do with a, with a cad red. The only difference is um, cad red is just a little more saturated. They're both very, very bright, uh, but the, the chromi feels a little bit higher. So the handling has to be a little bit more aware of that uh, saturation, I, I would say. But aside from that, we were saying how, you know, they're both, um, they, they both have heavy metals. One has mercury, the other one has cadmium. So, you know, it's not as if there's a safer option to be completely honest. Uh, and in terms of price, price point, you're better off with CAD, even though CADs usually are expensive colors. Uh, but, um, yeah, we kind of reached that, that not agreement, but we, we, we sort of weighed in a lot of the things that you can do with one and you can do with the other. And, uh, we were thinking, well, not quite then, you know, that useful. If you want to buy it just to go through the experience of painting with it, great. You know, I've certainly done that with a lot of, uh, pigments. 
But um, it's just that. It's just to go through an experience. But aside from that, I, I wouldn't really see anything that that just, um, you know, it's is like screaming at you saying, yeah, you have to have to buy this for uh, for a master copy. So, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. I would consider it. To me, uh, one of the big reasons is price point. So, yeah. Volvio Danielita. Okay, I need to hit my the um, drawing of this uh, head headboard. What do you call that thing? A headboard. Uh, headboard yeah. Headboard. Yeah. Yeah. That the the curves there are going to be super important. So I have to see if I can hit those because those are tough. That's not usually my my strength when I'm doing uh, when I'm doing drawing. So to hit you know very curvy things that speak about perspective. So. Let's see if we can sort of inch our way towards towards them, I feel. Mm, Doña Sophie dice, ¿alguna vez utilizaste blanco de plomo? Sí, sí, muchos años, eh, señora Sofía. Eh, María was saying, thank you so much. Uh, Cosette Paz dice, oh, qué lindo. Eh, creo que de Bogotá. <laughs> ¿No de la pintura? N no, pues... Porque lo dijo justo después de que respondimos. Mm -hmm. eh, Julia Tovar. Yeah. Who is that? Dice, ay, gracias, Dani, y un corazoncito. A ver, tengo otra. Dios santo. Would you rather have a pause or a rewind button in your life? Oh, that's not, that's not a bad one. No, She a pause. Google that one, but... I would say a pause. Pause or uh, rewind. No, I would 100% do rewind. Yeah? Yeah. Thing is that I don't want to go. I mean, the thing is, you you get if you if you get too used to not making decisions because you don't want to mess up. Yeah, you're gonna that's rewind very everything. Scary. Yeah, that's very yeah, that's it's a like very scary way of living. Yeah, and I think that you would even get used to rewinding for dumb things. Like for Anything. example, you're in a restaurant and you order something. You're in something. a restaurant. <laughs> you're in. I would certainly <laughs> rewind that. It's like. <laughs> The place is not as good as I thought. <laughs> you are in a restaurant. Oh, okay. That's better. <laughs> but you're in a restaurant. <laughs> yeah, I mean. It sounds terrible, but yeah, it's that's just a bad, my yeah. accent. Who, who, suge who suggested this place? <laughs> you are We're in a restaurant. We're going to review bomb this restaurant. So you are in a restaurant. Yeah, the shrimp was good. <laughs> the smell it. of pee, not so great. <laughs> and you order something. Mm -hmm. And you get to try it and you're like, ah, it's not that good. I'm just going to rewind and order another thing. Oh, do you keep that feeling though? What? Because could you imagine, could you like come with me on this ride? Could you imagine like saying, oh, I'm so like, I so want like an, a, like a horrible pizza. And you order like a horrible pizza, whatever that means. For me, it's like Domino's. But you order that. And um, and you eat it, and you're like super satisfied, and then you say, "Okay, let's rewind." And then I don't like I already ate, so I don't have to order it again. Like, could you keep? Would you keep the the feeling? Because you kind of keep the knowledge of having to rewind. So would you keep the experience of what happened? And if you keep the experience of what you... happened. Do, do you keep stuff like a full stomach or a, or a sense of being full? I don't know, but I think you would keep the experience you had before because then you would rewind and you wouldn't remember that you rewind. Right. So so you could eat, You potentially you could eat something like super unhealthy and then you could just go back and you've already, you already had that experience and you're like, no, I'm, I'll have a salad. And now you have like the perfect diet forever. No, because you've already eaten that. So no, maybe but you keep you... the experience, but you don't keep the full stomach. So you're saying that, for example, if you... Yeah. Uh, what? What? If you fall from the stairs, you can rewind and you wouldn't have the bruises? You wouldn't have because that's why you rewind. Well, you are saying... 
Yeah, but you wouldn't have that. because that's the point of rewinding. No, like, but maybe you're like if somebody oh, no. shoots you and you go like, oh, rewind, and then you go back and it's like, oh, I'm, I'm still shot. That serves that's like no purpose. But then it would be like OP to rewind. Well, I think it's pretty much an OP. No,、power. and it would be like it's not like having a swing set no, available to you always. No, because you're but... also choosing. I mean, you're saying like I keep the experience, right? But I don't keep the consequences of it. Well, that's the whole point of rewinding. That、mm. you don't keep no, because maybe you want to rewind because you want to revisit something. Oh, so, for example, you, you could like, say, "I want to, I want them to punch me." No,、again. of course you wouldn't rewind that. But I'm saying, for example, you had a very great time、uh, in a trip you did, so、yeah. you could rewind and relive that moment, and then you can go back to where you're at. No, that's kind of lame, though. That's I why、know. I wouldn't choose the rewind. No, that would. That wouldn't be a super powerful rewind button、cool、for me. The cool part of the pause, I think, it's like, it's kind of like you can be invisible because if you pause and you just, I mean, everyone stops, but you can like go around town, yeah, knowing things and getting like going places and visiting places, but then you would like. Pause play. Pause play. Pulse play. Press play. Press play. Pulse. No. Well. Press let's play. Let's go with press, which is universally accepted as. <laughs> accepted. <laughs>、uh, yeah, please. Yeah. Uh, so pause play. Right. Pulse play. I'm gonna、pulse、keep、play. saying it. Yeah. And uh, I mean, you've known a lot of things, a lot of places, and. Right, but we all know、cool、that you would、too. abuse that. Uh, that、uh, power just to sleep. Me? No. Yeah, it's like oh, it's seven in the morning. No. Pause. You know what I would do? Sleep. I mean, it's super、hours. cheesy, but I would be like, okay, give me a hug, <laughs> and、no. you give me a hug, and I freeze that because you're like,、Ugh. yeah, that's it. It's like a tiny hug, and then you go. Oh God. So I would be like, yes, we can snuggle a little bit. <laughs> oh my God, the lamest. <laughs> Or maybe I could be、Dang. like. Oh, I have a deadline. It's better than I the hug one. I can pause.、Line. No, for me they are.、Uh, I mean, they are my decisions. So I know, I know. Uh, if I have a deadline,、mm-hmm. I can make um, like I can、uh, press pause and just finish whatever I'm doing. Yeah. And then uh, just. Play go, again. Go back to the hug. And I have a lot of time. I would be like your hug slave. Yeah. No, you wouldn't know. It's like, why am I so tired of hug? Like, <laughs> my arms hurt so much. I would say. <laughs> But also, if people pause, I mean, because、yeah. if you think of, uh, the weird or like the, the advantage、people? part of it. Yeah. So, for example, I pause. Yeah. And I go to a bank. Yeah, I could take all the money, and just go to my house and have the money. Yeah, and press play. Yeah, they, they wouldn't, wouldn't they know. They wouldn't see you on the cameras. No. Or I could go. Would, I mean, you would disappear, so they would yeah, think that's like, why I'm oh, saying... this woman that is no, one second、wouldn't... is in the cameras, and then, or you could pause it before you go into no, the bank. No, that's why I'm saying I pause it in my house, then I go walking to a bank. That's quite a bit. Of, I mean, you don't have to. Pause it. Like just pause it a block away. No, because then if there's cameras, they could see. It doesn't matter. I mean, I'm trying to think, like, that if you could pause, you could do things like that, and no one would even notice. It's like you were invisible too. Yeah, and your mind is going illegal. No, know, no, no. That's why illegal, I said like, but... let's think about like the counterpart. Of every、uh, one of those decisions, but every every one of those wishes, I think, would be abused. I mean, it's、yeah. it's like a lot of power. So,、mm, Camila Ogerman, yeah, hola Camila, Camila,、uh, was saying there's a beautiful British movie about this. It's called About Time. Yeah, I've seen it. I was te va a encantar, Dani. No, nunca la he visto. I've seen it, yeah, because it's uh, with uh, Rachel McAdams. I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. So I, w- I won't tell you what it's about, but I've always liked her, so. Sí, just, Julia dice, sí, amo about time. Eh, Sofía Centurión dice, eso de dormir no está mal, igual. Te echas ocho horas de sueño en una pausa y después vivís las 24 de tu vida completas. I like that. Sí, la verdad. Dani lo usaría bastante, estoy 100% seguro. Sí. ¿La pausa? Sí. La pausa para, para no tener que... O sea, sentir que pudiste dormir, digamos, hasta las 10 de la mañana, pero te levantas y son las 6. Y dices, listo, estoy como un lulo. ¿Qué hay que hacer? ¿Qué hay que hacer en el día? Eh... Julia dice, pero no es de pausar, es de volver al pasado. Sí. Eh, digamos que ¿Qué? Es, ¿Cómo así? Digamos que es como un rewind. Ahí... ¿Ah, la peli? Sí, es como un... Pero es lo mismo, es como de toma de decisiones y... Paston was saying, I worked on that film. Oh, no wow. way. Wow. Look at you flexing. I want to know more. What did you uh, do, Paston? That's very cool. Um... And how was Rachel McAdams? <laughs> so, um, Cody Winnie was saying, haha, Look at did that. you don't, see. Don't paint like that, please. This is how I paint when I hold my brushes. Did you see that Rick and Morty, where Morty gets a rewind button? Oh, yeah. Be it's careful so tragic. for what you wish for. It's so tragic, that episode. He lives a, a whole life. He lives a lifetime. Oh, that episode hurts. I'm a big Rick and Morty fan, so... Mm. And I don't really care if people don't don't like it or... I always enjoyed it. I was never, like, into, like, these weird theories of Rick... It's like, oh, stop it. Just enjoy it. Julia Tovar, estaba diciendo hace un is. rato. Uh, yes, I think rewinding could get super addictive and you wouldn't live life. Yeah. It is tempting, though, but I think I would choose pause. Eh, Robert uh, oh no so wait let me I'm here right <laughs> Sandy under the sea said but what if with pausing you continue aging and from pausing often you end up being older than everyone around Ooh. you Ooh. so that does the uh, how do we inter- how do we understand time because time <gasps> is like a human construct because now I'm thinking about rewinding yeah When you rewind, would you be a copy of yourself? So, could you go back to that moment, but you would see your self of that moment yeah. and then the self They that rewinded? They actually deal with that in Rick and Morty's episode. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, the people that, that uh, commit, like, make a ma- bad mistake, they're sent into this dimension, this other dimension. So, they always live. Like they are just living somewhere else, like suffering from that, mm. you know, poor choice. Because then the rewind wouldn't be for, for example, what you were saying. Because, I mean, you could have a pizza and then you would rewind and it would be you from the past eating a pizza with you who rewind seeing. <laughs> so it would be two of you and one pizza. Mm, I don't want to share mine, so. So, mm, Julia Tovar said, yes, maybe with that? the rewind button, you're creating different timelines. That's, The multiverse. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The multiverse of bad choices. Paston said, making props. They were filming near where I live. I even did some paintings, but I didn't get to see the actors. Oh, well, that's cool. That's very cool. Mm. Robert Ortiz was saying, you paint almost every day. Yeah. What drives you to be this consistent? Is oh. it a must because oh. it's a job or because painting is just your life? Could you live without it? What's uh, the longest you've, you, have, you haven't painted at a time? Also, do you guys have a book out? So, uh, I'm going to repeat like question by question. Okay, rewind, so, please. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> you paint almost okay, every I day. <laughs> I wouldn't use the rewind power if that was the sound every blah, time blah, blah, I would blah, rewind. Blah, 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 blah. Um, you paint almost every day. 
Almost. What drives you to be this consistent? Uh, it's my life. I love it. It's it's uh it's the way I kind of make sense of the world. So it's uh it goes beyond being a job. If it was just a job, I I don't think I could you know do it the way you know I could feel the way I feel by doing it almost every day. But could, I kind of do it almost every day. Could you live without it? Probably I mean, could I live without it? Yes, of course. Would I do I think it would be a um a life that is you know as worth living as the one that i live right now probably not probably not so i i think i owe the human being that i am in a huge part to painting mm -hmm. and and it goes beyond just the the discipline part but just um no i if if i take out the moment of the moments of reflection from my life that painting provides me with, then I I wouldn't have those moments. I wouldn't know where to find those moments. Um, and you could say, well, you could go hiking, you could do yoga, you could do whatever. And sure, sure, that there's there's people that when they go jogging, they have those moments of reflection. Well, there's people that uh, when they ex you know do some sort of other exercise, they they have those moments. When they cook, they have those moments. When they read, they have those moments. But I think I'm just a, a human being that is meant to have those moments by painting. So I don't think I would be able to to live uh, as rich a life as I have right now uh, if I if you take that away from me. So yeah, and I don't I, I I think that painting the way the way we we kind of not promote painting because I don't I don't think. Uh, you know, necessarily just if everyone painted, it's a better world. No, n nothing like that. But I think that um, uh, the, the sort of painting we we sometimes um, talk about and, and, and we feel is a very, very powerful ally or a very powerful tool um, is more centered around um, enjoying the, the act of painting, just dedicating yourself to painting for, you know, a couple of hours uh, every day if you can, or a couple of hours every week if you can, or a couple of hours every month if you can, because it's really something that will be um, grateful regardless of the time that you put into it. It's not something that um, it's not something that punishes your your absence uh, from it. So um, I think that we always concentrate on that. And um, if I if I lack that, I think I, I just I would understand myself as less. That's that's really the the honest answer that I could give you. Longest you haven't painted at a time? Oof. I think it has to be around two weeks, maybe. No, I think we established in another live stream that the time we went to have our vacations with Samu and Fer. That was like two weeks. That was a week. No. That was a little, that was like 10 days, Danny. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was like in break, in October break. So they had to go back to school. Yeah, that was like nothing. <gasps> yes. No, no, that's what I'm saying. Like, you know when was longer when we were with uh, visiting my brother? But I did paint. Yeah, you did. I did paint. Um, and the other time that I was visiting my brother, I did a couple of paintings also. Mm. I painted Emma. I painted my, my niece and nephew. Yeah, and I so painted, two weeks, let's say. I think two for weeks, the is longest it, time, maybe for the last... Accurate. I don't even know. Maybe for the last 15 years, it's been like two weeks at most. Yeah, crazy. Because I can't. I just can't. I. It's part of your it's life. It's very I mean, hard it's... for me to see, to understand my life as, as something that where painting is not part of it. Mm -hmm. It's very, very tough for me. It's Again, this is my life, so it doesn't have to make sense for anyone else. And it doesn't mean like, oh my God, the dedication. It's like, no, no, no. It has nothing to do with those things. It's just that it's... Um, Dios. The thing is, it's part, part of my life. You okay, Danny, over there? No, I don't know what's happening, but my phone is like ringing and ringing. Oh, and mine is ringing too. So maybe it's something... No, they're just uh, sending pictures in uh, your family group. Okay, because I, I got like somebody calling me like eight times in a row, but oh. I don't know who it is. No, but I mean, it's okay. nothing bad. Yeah, 
I never answer when I when if I don't have the phone number if I don't have the phone number I just don't answer. Because I know that if it was something super urgent, like there's so many ways of that people could let me know that it was urgent. That mm. not a phone call. Yeah. Um, and the last question Robert Ortiz did, Ortiz did was also, do you guys have a book out? Um. So yeah, we we've, we we've... have a book in the making right now. Yes. No, but go ahead because you were answering. Yeah, we've had we've had uh, uh, publications made made um particularly of my work uh there there've been prior publications uh so there's um let's see there's four books sadly the only one that you can kind of find easily is a um chinese publication that you can order from amazon um uh cody bought it So Cody could actually say, you know, and Cody, you can be super, super honest. I don't know if you're here, but you could say if it's a, you know, it's if it's a good book or or how you found it. I don't want to condition any yeah, anything you're going to say. Nicholas is not going to feel bad. Oh, not at I all. I mean, it's not a book that we did. Not at all. It's a book that Nicholas was part of a yeah. series, but I mean, it's not like the books we've done. Right, right, right. Because, for example, the one uh, we have in the making is a book we are doing. So yes, but they have been uh, for the past couple of years. They they have been um, uh, crowdfunded projects. So the edition size uh, is actually limited uh, to the people that backed those projects at that time. So that that makes the books uh, a bit harder to find. You can find them in like second secondhand markets, but um, it it just makes them a lot harder to find, to be honest. Um, and that book is going well. We had a we were we were telling everyone that we had a meeting yesterday. Yes. I think we have like a clear vision of how expensive it's going to be. It's actually going to be a bit more or quite a bit more expensive yeah. than I had planned. Um, and, um, the, the, the woman that's advising us on our account, she was saying how everything just, um, is, is, uh, even though this is a Colombian, um, printer and publisher, but you know, we are going to essentially self publish, but they are also a publisher. They're both printer and publisher, probably one of the biggest ones in Latin America. Um, uh, they, uh, they, she was telling us that. The prices have now been standardized in dollars. So for us, that means that a lot of things just quickly became four times more expensive. Yeah. And she was also talking about some difficulties with the pulp. Yeah, of paper, paper. The like import of globally. paper. Right, right, right. So, so. there is a lot of issues uh, stemming from uh, post-COVID, from uh, Ukraine, um uh, So tough. Mm -hmm. And um, I realized that yesterday. So we we are trying to find like the balance mm -hmm. because um, not only production is going to be more expensive, but the import of the book is, is for sure going to be more expensive. Yeah, and they were also talking about uh, complications with uh, all the containers. Oh, yeah. That's why we have to. For exporting. So. Yeah, we have to do it um, by airplane. So. Yeah. No, no, no. But. It has With to go that, cargo. I was just going to say that everything adds up to the price. Yeah. So, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, production right now of, of you know, stuff that has to use um, materia prima. I, I don't know how to, like, you know, uh, materials that, that have to be imported in some way. Yeah, it has been just terribly, terribly impacted. So... So yeah, so it was it was a little um, not disheartening, but it is far more expensive than what we were anticipating. But it's okay; like we'll be able to um, we we will for sure be able to to produce the book. So there's there's no issue in that. This is in no way saying like oh we needed more money or um, or we're going to lose money like I lost on the last book. Um, it's not going to be quite that, but it's just very. Uh, 
grounding, let's say. Yeah. You know, it's just it that's just how the world is right now and it's you know, any any sort of project that you want to um that you want to do right now, there's there's a ton of difficulties um you know, surrounding it. And if it's a, a if it's a an exercise, a project that has to do with global shipping, um yeah, that's for sure going to be difficult nowadays. But so, oh. no, no, no. So I, I'm saying it's um, it's okay. We we're gonna deal with that. That's gonna be totally fine. We're kind of ready. We were expecting that, but you know, it's still a little kind of like a little gut, you know, gut punch. But everything's fine. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. no, I don't know. We're, we're everything's. I mean, we're still. On schedule, we're yeah. still good. Everything we are going to be able to to do this perfectly. Um, no, no, no. It just means that little variables we have to like adjust. And um, a book is always like not great business. So it's just about like you don't approach a book thinking, "Oh, this is going to be great business. Like I can live for two years after this with like no, you know, I don't have to care about anything." It's just like money's gonna flow in. Oh no, it's not not like that. So, um, so no, we're we're just you know super happy to have been given the chance by by the people that supported us, and we're gonna try to do you know best job we can with um, with this. By Irgineros and Shade, we're saying raw materials, so that's materia prima. Oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. Doña Sofía dice, adiós chicos, tengo que dejarlos, la verdad me encanta su canal y siento que ahora me acompañan mientras trabajo, la pintura está quedando increíble. Gracias eh, señora, señora Sofía, no, no sé qué estoy haciendo mejor. Nunca. Eh, nunca. Sí. Señora Sofía, muchas gracias, eh... que le reina. Julia Tovar dice, yo tengo dos, el primero me lo regaló Nicolás y el otro es del primer crowdfunding. Que de súper antojada del que era chiquito y de este de ahorita. ¿Y el primero se lo regalé? Sí, Uf. pues eso dice. No, ¿yo qué hacía? <risa> ¿Yo qué hago? Ay. Um, Robert Ortiz was saying, is that the Kickstarter book? I really wanted that one. Yeah, Robert, that's, that, that project already ended. And um, we've, you know, there's, there's, Honestly, a lot of people, there's probably, I think if we count all the people that have been super nice, um, that have told us that they would have wanted to be part of the project, our edition size for sure would have grown. Um, and we, we are very aware of that. It's just that, you know, we've, we've tried to explain all the reasons, like the logistical reasons why that doesn't quite make it easier for, it, for, for us having like a bigger size edition or having the ability to, to shift, to constantly change or shift that edition number, um, it's just not easy for us. So the, the simplest way was having a platform where we could have like a set number of backers and then, um, you know, even it's even more evident now that, that we, we have quotes and we know how expensive the uh, books are going to be that we realize Yeah, this is, you know, this is one of those things that um, that uh, it's not super easy to say, oh, let's just print more. Yeah, printing more costs more. Like the the unit value is going to be less expensive, but overall it's always going to be more expensive. And then the shipping uh, fees are going to be far more expensive. So everything, everything just adds up. So um, I did the window really big. But I like it because I don't think this space I have to. I'm sorry, but I'm just thinking out loud. I don't think I have to describe, like overly describe this space. Your mom was saying great, great, great painting, the best painter. Oh, but, well, it's your uh, it's your room, Olgita. That's your bedroom. So. Mm. Lapis Exilis, so shade, said, mm. I'm so excited for it. I bought three art books this year and oh this wow one, and this one i'm so so excited for oh yours that's awesome. kaufman and jeremy i never know if it's gettys 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 i i go with gettys 717. my brain goes gettys so mm borg zero zero so mm. monique was saying 
Love the composition. Thank you. Eh, no, este irreconocible. Dice Julia Tobar, dice, sí, nos lo regaló a varios, jaja, ja, todo lindo y con dedicatoria y todo. What? Sí, Nicolás. ¿Qué irreconocible, pasó con ese, sí. ¿Qué pasó ¿Qué es con ese persona? Nicolás? Eh, MM Borg 00 is saying, so looking forward to your book. And a happy face. Oh, thank you. We are too. Eh, Alejandro Morales said, Hi, Danny. Hi, Nicolás, Danny and friends. This painting is looking good. Thank you. Nicolás, I tried buying the Chinese book, but it is super expensive here in Germany. Oh, Amazon really? Amazon charges 218 what? euros for it. Oh, yeah. I know. That's too much. I can tell you, even though it's my book, I can tell you that's overpriced. So don't, don't pay for, like that. It's like 20 something dollars. I think Cody picked it up for 25. I think that's what he said the other day. So, no, no, no. Yeah, don't do that. Eh, Victoria Ponomarenko mm. was saying, love the colors. Would you Thank mind you. telling what materials and oil do you use? Looking forward for your book. So, um, this is oil on paper. Raw paper. Oil on raw paper. And my palette is, um, let's see, it's my regular palette. So it's titanium white, yellow ochre, cad red, alizarin crimson, raw umber, and ultramarine blue. And I've actually used a tiny bit of cobalt. So, yeah. Mm, Cosette Paz dice, ¿Dónde se compra? Me gustaría tener uno. Mm, ya no se puede, Cosette. Sí. Eh, Pero Pair, gracias, Cosette, por sí, el interés. Sí, sí, sí. Pair Gineros dice, Oh boy, art books are one of those things that one you, once you start buying, you can't stop. Oh, yeah. I buy one every time I sell a painting. Yeah, And yeah. Shade said, Jair agreed. I'd, liter I'd literally just spend everything on books and feel 100% fine. Haha. <laughs> oh, Danny met me when I had my whole collection of books. Mm -hmm. And it was... It was something. I mean, I remember every bit of sacrifice that I had to go through for my books. For traveling with the books too. Yeah. Because it wasn't like you bought them and they shipped uh, the books to your home. Oh, no. A but lot you of were them traveling with travel, them. Travel, uh, you know, carrying a lot of weight in books. But, but yeah, there are life experiences uh, many times. And... Um, But yeah, I, I acknowledge how how amazing a book can be, an art book can be. Cosette Paz dice en mayúsculas, ¿cómo? Es que Cosette fue una campaña de un eh, crowdfunding. Entonces eso lo que significa es que es una campaña en la que uno dice quiero hacer, en el caso de nosotros, este libro. Si llego a tal meta de plata, entonces si llego a X cantidad de plata, el libro se realiza y la gente lo que hace es apoyar esa campaña para que después se les envíe el libro si es que la campaña se logra financiar. En el caso de nosotros, pues afortunadamente la campaña sí se logró financiar y el libro está estimado para ser entregado en diciembre. Finales pero entonces año, es digamos, como, sí. sí, pero con un crowdfunding es como si las cosas se hicieran como de, de adelante hacia atrás. Entonces, primero se venden, primero es la gente... Es un pre-order. Exacto, sí, es, mucho es más fácil. Es como financiar la producción. Exacto. Entonces, la gente eh, que nos apoyó comprando el libro es la gente que lo va a recibir. No es como que vayamos a imprimir para venderlo después, sino que toda la producción es pensando en el número de libros que ya se vendieron. Mm. Cosette Paz dice, oh, no... Oh, no. Oh, no. Um, Shade said, when I moved to the U.S., I literally packed books in 10 cases. Mm -hmm. And it was pretty much all I took with me. Yeah. Uh, and Alejandro was saying, uh, Shade, where did you move from? And Shade said, Israel, I used to live in Jerusalem. Mm, M. Bark 00. So Monique was saying, ah, book lovers and a happy face. 
Um, a ver. Eh, painting demos by Cassie Sleep. We're saying hello from friends once again. Hello. Hi, uh, Cassie Sleep. How are you? Um, Pablo Suárez dice saludos Nicolás y Dani. Llegué tarde. Espectacular la pintura. No, pero no tarde. Y Julia dice, la cabecera de la cama está genial. Y unos emojis de, la, de las manitos de Gloria. No sé cómo llamarles. No, se llama Olga. Eh, Julia, ¿se acuerda de sus pinturas de, de su papá dormido? De, yo me acuerdo de ellas. Pues, o sea, obviamente usted se va a acordar más que yo de ellas, pero... Yo me acuerdo muy bien de ellas. Increíbles. De su mamá cosiendo era también, de pronto. Um, so... Cody Winnicky was saying, sorry, I got a phone call right as you were asking about the book. Oh, it's you okay. You may have already covered everything, but I love the book, especially for the price. You said they weren't perfect presentation of your work in terms of values, but they are very nice reproductions regardless. Okay, cool, cool. Mm, Thank and you. And Alejandro was saying, Cody, Nick was asking for how much you picked up the book. Hmm... Maria was asking, favorite art books you own? Oh, but I've, I've owned so many that, and I gave up so many of the ones that I liked. So just um, one so of your So maybe the ones that I still own, which I kept. I mean, I'm not trying to be like a martyr here. I obviously kept the ones that I really, really like. Um, so I kept... Um, probably one of my favorites has to be a book. It's a soul book that I have on El Greco, on the bur the burial of the Count of Orgaz. Mm -hmm. It's a whole book on like details, uh, <gasps> the best details, the most beautiful details on on that painting. I haven't seen that. No, no, that's on my mother's. That's <gasps> I, I still have that at my mother's. I would love to see that. Oh, it's amazing. I have to show it to you. Yeah, please. It's it's amazing. It's one of the most beautiful books I own. Um, but let's see. What what I have a Phil Hale book, like a small the uh, goat book that has like a little drawing of his in it. So I I love that book. All my James Jean books, which I adored. I um I gave to my school. That's what I did with uh with all my art books. But I only kept the one I kept was uh, Process Recess Three, which I mm -hmm. think is one of my favorite books. I think it's the best book of his. If if you like sketching, buy that book. That is uh, an incredible book. Uh, Process Recess Three, James Jean's book. Um, let me see. What else? What uh, what do I have? I have a really nice um. I have some really nice photography books also. Um, I have, what is, what's a tough one? I have some old, um, like Mateco, some old, you know, books that were kind of ruined, but I still have a lot of like um, love for them because I got them on a trip. So um, they're older books, older reproductions, but I really, really like. I have an old Del Greco book also that I always loved, that I, it's one of the first books I bought at, at uh, Strand in New York when I was a student. And um, I always felt so cool because when I went to um, Norman Rockwell's museum in Stockbridge in Massachusetts, uh, they still have his books and he owns the, he owned the exact same book that I have. It's, so it's a really old El Greco book and we have the same book. So I'm always like, oh yeah. You know, if it was good enough for uh, Norman Rockwell, good enough for me. And uh, I love that. Uh, I remember that the first, I mean, I had some art books here in Colombia when I was younger, but very little. But the first three books I bought at Strand, you know, very used books. So it would, they were cheap. They were like dirt cheap. I bought a Gustave Doré book, which I love because I, I love You know, I loved etching and I loved uh, engraving. Um, Doré is like, 
you know, one of the most amazing illustrators ever. So that one was easy for me. Um, I bought a Gustave Doré book. I bought a Rembrandt book and I bought that El Greco book. So I remember perfectly those three being the first three books I bought. And I, they, they still have like this, um, you know, special place in my heart. Uh, and the Rembrandt book was nothing special. It was just like, I wanted the Rembrandt book. Um, I had never owned a Rembrandt book uh, until I was in um, art school. So it was just, you know, super nice to say, okay, which one can I afford here? And um, yeah, I, I liked that one. But uh, but yeah, the El Greco one is like, it's just, I don't know, special for, for other reasons for me. But for example, I had my Ruprecht von Kaufmann books, the older ones, and I actually chose to give those up uh, because I would look at them constantly, like a little too much. So I told myself, this is not healthy for you. These are the greatest, some of the greatest images that I've ever seen, but I am going to drown here if I just keep looking at these all the time. So I decided to painfully give those up, but those are in my old school. Like if I go to the uh, library, those books are still there and I'm pretty sure they would be nice enough to let me, I mean, they know that I gave those books. So I ended up giving them like, oh, I think it was over 400 books. So I am pretty sure that if I go there, like they'll let me take books out. So Me it, it would suck if they were like, dude, you're not in school. You can't take these. Milos Vogel. Yeah. Who's saying, will you paint uh, Jan Vlakovic? Vlakovic? I don't know. Jan, I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, who is that? I'm sorry. Uh, Could you show me? Oh, oh, oh no, because Marshall, I was... Oh, my God, you... my mind was like in art. I was in art mode. Okay, no, no, fighters, because I was painting fighters. Um, how do you uh, say me, their name? Let me see. Go, go for it, Danny. No, I tried. I mean, you've already heard me. No, 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 but you were good. I said Ian Blakovic. That's actually pretty good because that's the ZZ in uh, in uh, in Polish, I think. It's, yeah. Um, yeah, that's how you that's how you say it, like mm -hmm. shush shush. But I was um, yeah yeah yeah. Uh, I don't know who I would if I if I would paint like an MMA fighter. Um, who I would go for, for like the next fighter. I don't know. Let me think. Give me a second. It's just that, you know, I ended up uh, painting Glover because uh, Teixeira, because it was just super, super fresh on my mind. And actually Yidi would be, would make also like um, a super, super cool painting. He's like this massive guy. Um, I missed, I missed those boxing paintings that I, that I did a while ago. I actually super enjoyed like those paintings that I did. So even today I was I was thinking ah, I should try to do a couple of those like new ones, but Well, nothing's stopping you. Well, just a lot of work. Th oh, but are... you're talking about like super big format. I paintings? like that. Yeah, they have to be large format format paintings, I feel. Cuz you could do them in this uh format. Smaller? Yeah, yeah it wouldn't be like you've seen You you saw the last one I did that was very that was quite large actually. Mm -hmm. Do you remember we saw that one in that guy's collection? Yes. Yeah. So yeah. So I like the fact that they're big. So. Mm, so. Um. Julia Tovar dice sí Nico hasta pensé darles del regalo. La de mi papá en la silla, porque acá no luce tanto y me encantaría que la tuvieran. Uy, Julia, pues yo no le niego, ese, o sea, yo no le hago el feo. Esa pintura <ríe> es súper linda. Um, Esto va a sonar raro, pero la barriga de su papá en esa es espectacular. Yo todavía me acuerdo de la barriga de su papá. Usted puede decirle a su papá que, 
que... Su barriga quedó grabada en mi memoria. Su barriga quedó... ¿No? Pero es verdad, me encantó. Eh... María. María. Who's saying, what makes El Greco so good? Oh I feel God. his art isn't the most pleasing to look at. Can you recommend your favorite piece from him? Oh, we just saw, we just came from um, Madrid, Madrid. Yeah. and from Toledo. So, yeah. you know, it's the two places on earth that I think you, you're going to have to go if you want to have like that full experience, full El Greco experience. I just think there's nobody like El Greco in art history. I know that he's like Greek Orthodox and that's like kind of like a simple way of understanding um, the way he, he um, you know, the distortions or the, the stylistic uh, decisions that he took when he, when he was, um, you know, deforming his figures and elongating shapes. Uh, but I think it goes beyond, like that's the super easy kind of like superficial answer to to those things. I think that it goes way beyond, like his genius goes way, way beyond him just being like, okay, this is like almost like Byzantine um, art uh, with a Baroque touch to it. Um, sure, that again, that is very shorthand El Greco, but that's like nothing. Um, maybe Danny can also give you her impressions uh, of when we we saw him but i just feel that the mix of him is so particular the fact that you know again you know th these greek roots these um uh uh th this kind of like icon uh imagery hmm. uh embedded into his dna um to get along with just being in Spain at that time, alongside with like, you know, sharing time with some of the greatest painters ever in painting history was just tremendous. That's like this, I don't know, it's like this perfect combination that um, that it, it'll never happen again. So when you look at his paintings, and again, in the context of, in the context of Baroque Spanish painting, It's just so peculiar. The mm. decisions he makes are so peculiar. Like the way, you know, for example, um, Venetian painting Tintoretto did some weird stuff. He was a very bold uh, painter. He was he was he, he was very risky with the uh, with the choices that he took, especially with the gesture of the human body. But nothing like El Greco. El Greco could destroy like the human body. He would just, you know, he would do these super weird thing with arms and fingers and legs and, you know, feet and toes. And even like the way he would outstretch the heads. Uh, it was, it was incredible and completely committed, like a hundred percent committed to what he was doing. There was almost like no doubt to the decisions that he was making. It's amazing. But I, I'd say like, if you go to El Prado, you'll see probably, you know, 20 paintings of him that are like absolute genius for sure. Uh, but if you can go to Toledo, yeah, that's you'll see one of the greatest paintings in painting history, which is the uh, bur the burial of, of Count of Orgas. Yeah, and uh, that painting is an experience. Yeah, you know, it's it's um because you could stay there. Yeah, and for it's, like a very long time, and, and you could like focus in every single character yeah but not all, only in the character but the way he decided to paint every single character yeah it's tremendous that yeah. that painting is tremendous yeah it's an enormous painting also i mean it's yeah it's uh oof. i don't know it's um uh, i i i can't convince you because i don't think a lot of art has to do with just convincing people of like oh my god what are you talking about well, how can you not like this artist that's amazing Like you can make that argument for anyone. It's like if somebody says, "I don't like Sargent," it's like, "Oh my God, sacrilege!" What do you mean you don't like Sargent? And and you could try and and convince people of you know why they should like this this painter that you you so much admire. But the truth is, no, you're not. You know, there's there's nothing. Um, 
there's no rules that say that you're supposed to like, you know, these amazing artists. You you can you're totally fine. Don't ever feel guilty if you just say, "No, nah, it doesn't move me that much." Like I just don't see it. It's okay. It's okay. I mean, I'm I'm dying a little bit, but uh on the inside. But <laughs> but I I'm also very very aware that not everyone has to like the the same things. Yes. So are you okay? Yeah. So um I don't know. If if you have the chance to experience this paintings uh in real life, I would very much so recommend it because I, I think that there's no replacement for that. And that's true for every single painter, to be honest. Eh, Julia dice, jaja, el domingo que voy a votar se las llevo y le contaré a mi papá el cumplido de su panza. <laughs> Ay, Julia, tan bonita. No, Muchas gracias. Ya no, quiero o sea, verla, ya quiero verla. Sí, es muy, uy, es muy chévere esa pintura. Ya quiero verla porque tú la conoces. Sí, Yo sí, Yo no. Sí. No, a, no a Julia, la pintura. También. Pues yo sí la conocí. ¿Tú también la conoces? Sí. Eh, no sé si quieras conocer la panza del papá, pero... Pues la voy a conocer con la pintura. Sí. Eh, M.M. Borg 00, mm -hmm. so Monique, was saying, thank you for sharing your thoughts on El Greco. Eh, Irving Torres was saying, hi guys, kind of hey, late. Irving. Nice painting. Thank you. I have a question for both. Please. How often do you do master copies for Danny and for Nico? How often did you paint master copies in your formative years? Uh, so I'll start. I don't do them as much as I used to. So I'm sorry. Can I start? Because mine is uh, shorter. Okay, please. Because I would say that uh, it's kind of curious. But I think I've, I can count with my fingers. Uh, the master copies I did because I never uh, took that uh, route. Yeah. Um, maybe because it wasn't something that the university incentivate us to do. It's not like a task you had to do. So I did, I remember I did uh, Sorn for a class. Yeah. Mm. And I did another one in my sketchbook, another Zorn in my sketchbook. But I'm thinking about it and I think that I've, I haven't done a lot. Because I know that you, for example, and you would uh, talk a, a lot more about this, but you had to do for the university, well, like we you didn't had have to go to. to the museum. No, we didn't. Oh, well, there's some exercises, but, but very, very few. But Yeah, but it was like something that... It was kind of a practice you did in the university. And I think you, you can get what I'm trying to say. Because oh, it's yeah, not yeah. like something... I mean, you teach in the university I studied. And you know that it wasn't something common. No, no, no. no. So just to give you an idea of how uncommon it is here. Uh, in our National Museum here in Bogota. I wanted to do a copy of um, a painting. Of... Um, that it's a it's a great painting that they had they have here of a Spanish painter from the uh, late nine, late nineteenth century that you know came here and eventually became the uh, director of the um, school and uh, and I, I it's it's a really really cool really great painting and I wanted to copy it because I've I've always liked it and I think it's one of the best paintings that they have there. You know, the best sort of, uh, you know, 19th century kind of like traditional paintings that they have in that collection. So I asked if I could just go there and copy. And at that time, the director was a very famous artist. Um, so I had to go talk to her. And she asked me, why do you want to copy this? And I was like... I just feel it's, you know, it's a, it's an Way amazing, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, it's a great painting and I, I just want to like look at it for a while and I want to study it and yeah. I want to copy it. And, uh, and, uh, she, she said, no, she said, no. So it was very, very weird because, um, I eventually then met people that were higher up like there was um 
let's say, ¿cómo se dice? Como una junta, como... Mm. So there, there was a, a board. A, a board. Yeah. So I eventually met this woman that was part of this board. And she was like, what do you mean they didn't let you uh, copy the painting? And she was like, she literally told me like that she had more of a say as to who could copy, like who could do anything in the museum than her, which is really weird because the other person was, again, was she was an artist, but she was she had the role of the director and then this this person she gave me a uh, permission but the artist she was like it's pointless to copy stuff nowadays no pointless but... she she was saying it was absolutely pointless and it was ridiculous but then she's just trying to just i mean she doesn't believe that that's a, a way to study or to learn art And she's just using her power to neglect people to yeah. be able to do that. Because I don't think that's good. I mean, you could say, well, I don't think if it's some, I don't think it's something that can, uh, I don't know, nurture your studies in art. Yeah. But sure, you can do it. But I don't think, I'm sorry, I, need, I, I didn't uh, know about this story. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think it's like terrible when people use their power to say, You know, I really believe this and I don't believe in this other thing. So, nope, you can't do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was, she was very, very dismissive. Terrible. She was, and she treated me like, oh, this is so antiquated, like so... Terrible. Yeah, and, and in my mind, I was like, almost every single museum in the world, you see copyists yeah. like, doing that. And you, you know, it's so fun to see people copying. Yeah, because I would say that, I mean... When I went to museums here in Colombia, you never see someone copying. No, no, no. It's something that you usually see when you go out to like other museums in the United States or even in I don't know if in Europe you can Oh. I mean, um, I've been all only to Spain, but I'm thinking and for example, I don't think you could do it in El Prado. I mean, you can't even take pictures. No, you can. You can copy in El Prado. Oh, yeah. yeah? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been so, to El Prado I mean, many times where there's copyists. Think about that. Like you can copy, you can take pictures, but they let you copy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, they love that. They know that you're you're going to do it. It's a tradition. Exactly, in, in but all here, of art like But not here in Colombia. No, no, no. So And that's why I said that It was weird because it wasn't something I grew up with. Yeah. Like I didn't grow up seeing people doing master copies of stud of things here, like of right. artworks here in Colombia. Right. So, so um, what was very cool about this is that they eventually let me copy. I probably spent one day a week for uh, maybe five, six sessions copying that painting. So it was probably like month and a half. Um, but it was super cool because what you do get in museums here is like schools going to, like schools having trips and everything. So tons of kids would stop by and the teachers from the uh, from every school would tell me, oh, do you mind if we watch you and if we could ask questions and every... All the kids would like sit on the floor and start asking questions about mm, painting. That's so nice. Like they could not, they wouldn't care about the painting itself. Like they were far more interested in me um, doing the copy. But, and this wasn't about me. This was about like, I never got that when I was a kid, like having the opportunity to be, you know, uh, to approach painting like that. My mm -hmm. school rarely had like school trips um, or trips to the museums and stuff. So I thought that that was amazing. And I was like, how could somebody have like such a big ego that just because they feel that this is not cool, they don't see how cool it is for like children, for example. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. It's like, I don't believe in that. So no, you can't do it. What? I mean, you don't have to do a master copy, but why won't you let people do the master copy? Like, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. And at, I think that at the Tate, you, mm -hmm. you oh Danny, if you would see that, you would have loved it. They have like school trips constantly, and um, they'll have like little kids with like they'll give them paper, like mm -hmm. these sheets of paper, 
and you could be in front of like the um, Ophelia and mm -hmm. they are copying the Ophelia. No, so it's I like love 20 that. kids with like paper on the floor and like all spread out, like tons of crayons and colors. I love and that. And everyone is like, all of them, they're loving. It's like such a cool way to live with art that I remember when I first saw that, I was like, oh, this is so beautiful. Yeah, because like, in that this way, is the way it's supposed to exactly, be. Exactly. And in that way, you can feel that art can really be part of your life. Yeah, you grow up with a painting. Which is something that you usually don't feel in museums when you have to like, what we were talking about, like have to take a step back and just like see something, but you're not able to ask something because then you're dumb if oh, you yeah. don't know about it and you're not able to like experience it in another way. Right. And so it's like you always have painting as something super far from your life. Yes, yes. And I remember when I went to uh, Chicago, because yep. I was going to say that the first time I saw that was when I went to Chicago. So it wasn't like, I mean, I knew that people did studies. Yeah. But I haven't like been part of the process of someone doing a master copy. Yeah. Until I went to Chicago and that was like, 2017 maybe yeah 18 so it was like yesterday for me and i remember it was super cool super super cool oh it's amazing there were two friends and they were uh doing a drawing of a sculpture yeah i mean and it was amazing i mean i loved it and then there were people uh doing paintings i think someone was doing a gouache study Yeah. And I just, I loved it. And I saw in the cafeteria people like sharing uh, what they were doing, yeah. like showing what they were doing because they were like smaller formats. And yeah, probably, I just... It was probably a class and they had asked for like permission or something. No, I don't know. I don't know if it was, but because I think I saw two different uh, groups. Okay. So... Yeah, the thing is like, it's... Uh... I mean, it depends on the museum. You will have but, to ask for a permit. Right. Like if you're taking out gouache, for example, you have to, you know, you would have to ask for a bit of a permission, but they'll never say no. You just have to go through like whatever they ask you to, you know, whatever type of like paperwork you have to do or, but it's, it's super, super simple. But I still remember the times that I copied at the Met. They were amazing. Um, so incredible experiences. The same thing. It's like, people so interested in knowing, you know, uh, and watching you paint because a lot of times the people that go to museums, they don't have the, that experience, that closeness to, to like watching somebody work. Mm -hmm. So they find it fascinating when they can see somebody like, you know, doing what they understand. It's like the same thing. And I remember I would copy Rembrandt and they would look at my painting more than they would look at the Rembrandt. And I would be like, no, 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 don't, please don't like always look more at, at this painting. Yeah, but I, I do think it's super cool because it's a way of like seeing the, not only the finished piece oh, and uh, understanding uh, that. Sorry. No, I just, no, no. I was just like yeah, yeah, waiting. Yeah, I didn't clean my palate. To, yeah. so. No, no, no. Go ahead. I was listening. I was suffering, but I was listening. Uh, no, that I was saying that I think it's super interesting not to only see the final process, like the final yeah. uh, thing you did, Yeah. but seeing the art process because there's a lot of people that never paint in their life. Yeah, then we'll never So they paint. never know how that process is Yeah. or how that process looks like or the times of that process. Yeah. So, yes, I think that's super cool, but it's not a big thing here in Colombia. No, no. But I would, even though it's not something that I quite do, I mean, we did a, a few studies uh, for um, our Painted Lives um, in, in our first two years as, mm -hmm. as exercises. But uh, aside from those, I haven't done it quite um, much after that. Uh But I always like, I think that if I could spend time just looking at other people's like paintings, it's just fascinating. It's, it's amazing. I, I, you know, it's almost like I would feel spoiled. I would feel like I can't spend too much time here because it's going to swallow me. Hmm. It's going to be so attractive to, to see how geniuses solved, you know, other 
you know, their work that I'm, if I'm not careful, I'm going to stay here forever, I feel. So, um, but I would suggest it for anyone, anyone, just a, a painting, a work that you love, or if you are, if you are part of a city that allows you to go to your museum and, you know, you probably have to file some paperwork, but um, if you're allowed to just sit there and draw or paint, there's such a wonderful tradition of people copying, mm -hmm. you know, from from a sergeant studying El Greco or, or sergeant studying Velázquez or uh, Mariano Fortuny copying um, uh, Giuseppe Rivera. Or Frank Auerbach doing a bunch of, uh, what, what was it, uh, Titians, was it, that he was doing? I mean, it's such an amazing thing. So, yeah, I, I would totally suggest it for people that can do that to please, please do so. Because it's, it's an experience like no other, I feel. Mm. Uh, I think I'm going to be almost done, Danny, because I really like the... Uh, just the freshness yeah, of it. Yeah, me too. The, the openness, the freshness of it. Um, if if our goal was to explore this, um, you know, this space through through uh, contrast of temperature, then I think we're there. I yeah. think we are. You know, we we are, we did a very effective job at, mm -hmm. at doing so. Like this very powerful encounter of of you know a direction of light that comes from outside the picture plane, you know, this this um, artificial light coming from this lamp and then clashing through this this uh, light, this cooler light that has to sort of uh, curve its way into this other room because it's um, blocked by this wall. But then there's, you know, this this window that's farther back that's uh, giving us that that light source that's filling, you know, those um, those planes that are farther into the uh, into the picture. So um, I took some choices uh, from the beginning. There is like this uh, scratchy, almost like pastel like quality of um, that I'm really exploring heavily with uh, a lot of these paintings now mm -hmm. that I really love. Mm -hmm. I have to say, I think people that that kind of know my work or that have been familiar with the stuff that I've been doing for for a couple of years, they have probably seen that transitioning to this kind of rougher uh kind of you know draggy paint it it does seem like uh, like scratchier paint i am loving it i am so so loving exploring these possibilities with paint um so a lot of these choices are choices this openness i wouldn't i wouldn't want this is my mother's tv but i wouldn't want that to be like this clean rectangle there it just wouldn't work as a as a very sharp shape same thing with her legs um they kind of have to you know in in a very weird way organically fade mm -hmm. into into this this atmosphere here um there's there's just you know it's the painting about space and light it doesn't have yes. to describe every single element that is being touched by that, that that light you know light travels but it doesn't have to stop and say bedded it doesn't have to stop it like it bears no responsibility light doesn't it's not in light's contract to stop and say oh that's a pillow i'm going to have to say pillow no no light can be this enormously overpowering thing that can just you know um almost like a, a, an enormous wave that just crashes on top of everything and it just it doesn't care what things are it doesn't care what things are called and sometimes you can you can invoke that that power of of light and say you know what it's going to wash over the uh nightstand and then go to the pillows and then to the sheet and then cross the face even the the portrait which i really like actually cuz that's my mother but there's very little semblance of my mother there but no, uh but i see your mom and the whole pose i think everything is just my mother yeah uh, so it just even like, like it even crashes over i I'm, feel i'm sorry no no, no i'm sorry I'm yeah i was like being like super theatrical terribly no i was gonna say that even the temperature yeah. of that house yeah reminds me of your mother so everything feels 
super oh that's so cool like your mother so yeah, yeah but go ahead i'm sorry i was no 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 because I, i i wanted to acknowledge that and i wanted to see if i could use that as this premise for this this painting to say yeah paintings don't have to be like this painting i wouldn't say i would say my mother inhabits this painting but i wouldn't say oh it's a painting of my mother no my mother's there but it's more a painting of how her room feels like Like that is what I'm going for. Mm -hmm. And if you go in the afternoon, this this was actually when my mother had gone through her hip replacement uh, operation. Mm -hmm. So and if you go through, and, and she had to lie down. So I, I actually spent uh, a lot of days with my mom just visiting her and, and uh, accompanying her when she was doing her therapy. Um, but if you if you go into my mother's room, uh, that's what it feels like. And if yeah. you go there in the afternoon, like in the kind of afternoon and she has to turn on her light in her nightstand and she's lying there, but you can still see cool light coming from that window. Like there's no doubt that that's what mm -hmm. it feels like. Yes. I, I, it's very hard for me because I grew up here. So mm -hmm. I guess that's my son, <laughs> but uh, no, I guess Samu was here. We weren't expecting Samu, but he's here. But Danny, for example, that's not, you know, she doesn't have to be, um, she doesn't have to have the life that I have lived, you know, in this room, like even for her, like, I hope that, would you say that that is very much so that space? Like, yeah, it is a hundred percent that space. Yeah. It's... And even like the pose. Oh yeah. Everything. So Samu was saying bye. Hi oh. and bye. <laughs> bueno, mi Samu. Te amo. Chao, mi Samu. Everything. I even, I mean, when you were doing the frame of the, of the bed. Yeah. I was thinking like, I don't know, but that like super thick wood, yeah, like super heavy furniture, yeah, that makes me think about your house. Oh, everything's like percent. every bed, a thousand percent, and the light. I mean, the light that reflects the light from the window that re reflects on the TV. Yeah, that's like a thousand yeah, percent. Yeah, these little bits. Yeah, yeah, and and the one in the um, this one. No, it'll be the glass underneath the tv oh these little bits yeah that's like <laughs> yeah. i mean when you were painting that i was like that's like being there yeah she has like these old kind of consoles yeah but it sounds like where super... you put like dvds yeah it can and it has like a piece of glass it can sound like super random things i'm mentioning but i know that you that you've been there you know that those are the type oh, of everything. things that make you feel like yeah you're Like it's part of your mom's house. That, that, this thing that already lost one of the doors because <laughs> the, I don't know, some screws kind of fell and, yeah. and we never kind of put it. And it's a curved console. Mm -hmm. um, but this one does close. One side does close. And um, I, in my brain, I can hear the thing closing because it's one of those old magnet things that it's a spring and then a magnet. So you just go, choom, choom, And it's glass. Mm -hmm. So I know what that sounds like yes. even. I just know the sound of these of this room. And um, my sisters and me, we make fun of, um, like, for example, there's there's a, um, not a curtain. Uh, what do you call? Una persiana? Like a... Shades. Yeah. There are shades <laughs> here that I know what they sound like when you have to, like, open them up. Yeah, you always talk about a, a closet. Yeah, and then there's my mother's closet would be right here. It would be outside the uh, picture plane. And she has rosary beads and she has like a, a frame of like the uh, Virgin and one of like um, Jesus. And when you open her closet, it all clanks because they, they're just hanging with a nail inside the closet. So it like the rosary just rattles and then the, the, the very thin frames just bang against the uh, wood of the... Um, of the door of the closet door so there's so many like sensible sounds and 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 memories attached to like this this room mm -hmm. that um it's impossible to me not to think that all of that is what i paint mm -hmm. and 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 it makes it impossible also to think that oh i'm I, i'm just gonna paint these cushions or i'm just gonna paint how the um the nightstand feels or or oh i'm just going to concentrate on my mother's features or her hand like it would be such a missed opportunity if i don't embrace the the wholeness of this room 
and everything that I know about the room when we were younger, because this would be the initially this would be the only place where we had a TV. Mm -hmm. So what we would do when we were little, it's like my my parents' bed, and then there's like a you know it was all um, uh, rug. What do you call that? It was all um, yeah carpet. Carpet. So my whole my whole house was was carpeted. So it would be a carpet. And then we would lie down here, like past the bed. There's like no space, kind of. You can walk through it, but there's like no space. And that's where we would lie down and we would watch TV. But that like become a tradition. Yeah, 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 I remember for us. seeing Fer. Yeah. And Pocha. Uh, Pocha. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they both lying there. Yeah. I mean, and it's not like you told them. Oh, no, there. nobody. No, it's like no. Just the house we would just sit here and i remember Inviting there were times that we were here. like you know it was sunday or something and we would order a pizza and we would watch whatever was on tv just like regular tv and i just remember sitting here watching tv or for example this is the only tv where we would have cable mm -hmm. and i would watch like the uh, bulls playing in the 90s like mid 90s mm -hmm. like And I would just scream here, but I would always be here because I would always know that my parents would be here or like other people would be lying in bed. So it's just such a, I don't know. It's it's like such a live, in my mind, it's such a, a space that has been lived in that you can't just paint a space. You can't, yeah. like when you're painting something like that, you can't just say, is my perspective right? It's my, like... Is this shape right? Is this color right? Yeah, because the space means something. Well, exactly. It's like, like you can't it goes far beyond space, like yeah. just just a, a room. It can't just be a room. Um, that's why I think I whenever I paint spaces, I'm I'm overwhelmed by spaces. Like there there's there's too much. Like I I can't in the same way I paint people and and particularly people that I care about, like it, it's so deep. It runs, painting runs so, so deep that I just can't, you know, when I paint my mother's house, it has to be like the hallway or it has to be like, this is the wooden floor and this is how, what the stairs feel like. When I was painting my mother and past, you know, the kitchen, because my mother lives past the kitchen. She she has this room where it used to be her studio, where she used to do print, uh, like all her uh, printing. Mm -hmm. um, that's where her press was. Uh, but that now it's gone. But that's... The that's place if she... you go into our house, you're bound to find her back there. Yeah. That's her space. Yeah, building a Lego or, yeah, or doing drinking it. a tea, yeah, but always or, there. Right. Or she was... Um, when she used to... Uh, uh, she used to... Uh, be the administrator for the uh, for the condo yeah. so uh, that's where she would work and she would have all her paperwork or playing and she would, in her phone but always anything there. she's she's there that's her space so I used to the reason for my mother painting my mother's painting being her past all these things in the kitchen was because that was her space like mm -hmm. you were you you would find her past all these things so for me spaces are are just really really important and it doesn't mean that i can't paint like a street i go to in rome you know i can always acknowledge that that was like super cool and i want to paint this space and i would paint the street but it's different I right mean... it's different I, f i feel like that's when i can be like a plein air you know painter a very yeah. average plein air painter or a very average just uh landscape urban landscape painter but when i paint like my spaces the spaces that i know to be true even like the small painting of of danny like past our hallway and in our room like inside mm -hmm. the closet with that little light yeah um uh, on top of her head that we did for our painted lives uh that was that is our space like yes. that is our apartment and yeah. that is very much so our space and i have to when i do those things it's like okay like i'm starting to understand them again not as my own in terms of ownership It, it, they, they don't belong to me like you know if we don't do well with our channel or if you know whatever life changes and the world collapses or or you know um interest rates go up and economy falls and nobody has money and we have to give up this apartment because we only rent 
then that space is going to change. So yeah, it's not about our space. Of inhabiting that yeah, space. Yeah, but it's a, like a space that of you're like, familiar with. Like, yeah, building your life around those Right, and we know places. what that floor looks like. And for example, I've noticed where this floor accumulates uh, dust. Yeah, me too. It, like there's always like certain places where it just keeps du dust. <laughs> so th that sort of thing, like, like this is the place that I know, that I'm beginning to know by heart. So... Um, I would say that, and not to say that you can't set, it's not as if you can't set up and paint anywhere. Like, for example, when I see um, Mark D'Alessio do that, when I see, you know, I always call him Pete the Street, but Peter Brown, when, when you see mm -hmm. Pete the Street like set up in, in some street in the UK or in Ireland or anywhere, and he starts to paint, it's, it's like, oh my God, majestic. When I, when I see, um, did I say Jennifer McChristian or no? No. When I, when I see Jennifer paint, it's like, oh my god, that's amazing! Like there are very powerful painters. Peter Van Dyke, for God's sake, Peter Van Dyke, the way he paints spaces, my God, he's like glorious. But to me, like I can play that role, but I know that I can add as a painter. I can speak as an artist, as a painter when there's life attached to something to to whatever i paint when when i feel that there's a sense of familiarity to to what i'm painting um i there there's something different about that there's something that you can't put your finger on you can't measure it you can't quantify it you can't there's and and it seems like it doesn't matter because nobody's going to feel the way you feel this space like danny can attest to it if my sisters and my brother were here, they were like, oh my God, that's my mother's. We're like, what are you talking about? That's our house. Mm -hmm. um, and I would feel super cool when they say that's our house because that's like, the only, like in, in essence, that would be the only people that could share that experience. Yeah, because I, I even recognize this, that space, but I have a different experience right, that you right. had. You have I mean, like it's a the same, like, physical kind of like experience. Yeah, no, like and it, I would even say it's like temporary different. Right. Because I mean, I when I think about that house, I think about the beginning of our relationship. Right, right, right. So I just attach that to different memories. Right, it's right, It's like right. you trying to think about my parents' house. Right. You can't experience that as I did of course, when I was yeah. a kid. But you kind of attach that to when we were a couple starting right. out when we were seeing movies whatever yeah yeah like but your your not... your the way your bed was off to a corner and exactly. i would always like be against the wall exactly. like against but, two walls exactly yeah, but for example like it the bed wasn't always there right so i do have memories when the bed was over there but i do have memories before that right, so that's right. what i'm trying to say like your house has a super different cognition to you yep. in terms of memory than what it does to me. Because right. I experienced it in a different level. But let's what say. I feel is that even though, and we're talking too much, I hope people like, yeah. well, but we're talking, like, who cares? That's what we do. Yeah, I mean. yeah, yeah. Um, but what I feel is like, um, even though these are like deeply personal and they can only be personal because no way anyone else can access what you're feeling you know what the clanking of 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 you know that sound when mm -hmm. you open my mother's uh closet door sounds like or feels like or what would that uh sort of ignites in your memory um even though nobody can feel that i think that when you do a painting and when you are so fully immersed in that feeling like the fact that you you let those feelings also be part of your painting. I don't know how to. I, I really don't know how else to like express that. No, but, but I, I. But I think that that power wait. comes through in a painting. I think that when that, you know, that's that's the sort of thing that you can say, "Wow, I don't know where it is." But I feel like that's that that space, even though it's yours and it, it, even though it's part of your family, even though it's part of your history, it's like, hey, it does that feel weird? Because I feel it's kind of part of mine, too. Like and, and it's not about the bed. It's not about the, the TV. It's not about the window there because the, the, the your parents bedroom could be, you know, completely different. But it's about like, oh, yeah. I remember 
coming in and finding my mother like that. Or I remember just the warmness and coolness of a place in my house that felt like that. Mm -hmm. um, or I just remember the heavy atmosphere that, you know, the soupy atmosphere as soon as you enter my, my old house. Like those things, you start to, you know, you, you, you realize that, oh, wow, people actually can share these things, even though it's like a deeply personal memory and it's highly particular. That's when none of it makes sense because it's like, how can such a specific experience be universal? And it does. I don't know where it hits you. I have no idea. Mm. It seems almost like instinctual in many ways. But I think when you do that well, and I'm not arguing I'm doing this well here, but I actually feel it. I feel my house here. But um, when you do that well, I think it, you know, people are going to say, hey, we feel it too. Yeah, like, it communicates. Yeah, that. you don't have to do anything. You don't have to like exert yourself trying to explain why this is amazing and why this is so powerful to you. It's like, hey, I am somebody from across the world looking at your painting I've never met you, but and, I get what you're but feeling. But I love it, yeah. and I want this painting because it makes me feel like it's my house. Exactly, it's amazing. That yeah. feeling is incredible, incredible. Yeah. That power is just like, woof. You know, the power of an image. It's just, but the power also of an image that has to be, I don't know. It has to be because you live through the making of a painting. So there's something there that that's just very strong about just having to construct this feeling you you because it's not i mean i'm not saying it's better or worse but it's not it's not me photographing my mother and saying that's it mm -hmm. i mean a good photography that does that it's a very powerful image too but it, it hits you differently but the, the 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 fact that you have to go through just that like almost like saying oh it's a, this is mud that i have to like sludge through to get to that feeling, um, it's really nice. Yeah, it's almost like you have, have to, to work for it. You have to. You yeah, you, and that you have to like take decisions to kind of build up that yeah. that you're trying to convey. Yeah. With the viewer. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 It's very powerful. Again. Yes. I, we're again we're not talking about this painting. No, but it is. I, I don't mean, like to talk. I have about to my say, work, I. But it's a very. It's a. It's almost like this beautiful power that you can you can access as long as you're doing things well. As, yeah. as long as you're you know you're willing to feed off of the right things that can propel a painting that can that can you know power a painting. So, anyways, that was a lot of talking for yeah, for the your head. Yeah, remember the camera. Oh no, it's no, way no, up no. high. Because I'm afraid no, of look, you. Look, look, I'm like, good. I'm good. No, I'm bleeding good. out. No, 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 I'm not gonna bleed out. Uh, um, anyways yeah so uh thank you everyone yeah for joining us yeah sorry about that in the end no I, no I, no I, no I, sorry i, I mean no. Susie love art page was saying i love all your talking yeah no i get and, and i get strangely emotional when i do stuff like this so i would wouldn't yeah. say that's strange well for me you know my feelings are weird so no but i mean there are your emotions i know i know but but yeah it's um yeah it's awesome yeah so thank you everyone thank you for being here yes remember if you haven't subscribed uh and ring the bell yeah don't you can be do like it. castaño yeah don't be um no is it castaño no uh, guadaño guadaño <laughs> uh, or castaño maybe yeah yeah, yeah. castaño like hasn't... fabio guadaño no don't be like fabio uh are you sure it was fabio i missed in the castaño so I probably also whiffed at the uh, Fabio, but I'm pretty, no, it's Fabio, Fabio Guadagno, yeah. I don't think it's Fabio. Or, well, he knows who, like, he knows. But I think it's Fabian. Okay. I mean, we're close. Yeah, but don't... Uh, be like him. Yeah. Oh, no, be like him, because he already ringed the yeah, bell. Yeah, be like him, because he subscribed. Yes. He ring the bell. Yeah. And now he He's a better person for it. He is here on Amazing. time. Yeah. So, yeah, remember to do, to do that. Remember also that we have a webpage. Yes. It's called ourpainedlives.com. boiledghost.com. Yeah, lasagna cadaver. So, 
ourpaintedlives.com. Lasagna cadaver. Where we have uh where we upload all the paintings we do in these sessions and the paintings or art we create for the visual correspondence. Yes. So uh be sure to check it check it out. Yes. And to I don't know, check out um the uh playlists. Oh yeah, in, we've in done. Channel. Yeah. Yeah. Uh we have the playlists of visual correspondence. Yeah. We and have a Spanish we have playing a, exactly. a Spanish playlist. Yeah, and we have the visual no, we well, have the playlists for every single week we did cuz I was uh very organized about it. Yeah. And there's a At least one of us. <laughs> and there's a playlist for every week. Yes. And remember we have Instagrams. If you want oh, to check them out, the they're on we the screen. Like really... I'm just trying to remember everything we never say. So yeah, okay, yeah. most this important was, of all, yeah, heavy for people ring the bell now. and we'll see you tomorrow. Yes. Bye, everyone. Bye.